This episode of Hobie is sponsored by Hello Jeff. Save 20% off your first meal box with promo code HobiePod. Please note that any comments, jokes, questions, maybe, anything that we say on the History of Bad Ideas is all in good fun. And remember, we insult everybody. Our thoughts, opinions, questions, anything else, actions that we do on the show do not reflect any of our employers, organizations, advertisers, or anyone else that is associated with the history of bad ideas. And remember, at the end of the day, it's just a joke. Welcome to the History of Bad Ideas, episode number 477. I'm Jason. I'm Jeff. I'm Blake. I don't have an outline. And I'm Brian. Brian took it from you. I had it right there for you. No, he took you it. Put it right there. Put it right here. Where's Brian's outline? Yeah. He didn't tell me he needed one. That's what happens. Hey, ink paper, uh, inkjet stuff isn't cheap. Yeah, neither is gas. I'll get you an outline next week. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Ooh, burn. I guess you got a point there. I do. What happens if we use the inkjet printer, like put that don't, don't. in the ga- in no, the gas tank? No, no, don't. We'll try that in your car. <sighs> or we can use gas in his inkjet printer. Ooh, I like oh, that, that would be fun. I feel like that could work, right? Yep. Okay. Don't try this at home. We would just have to instead of paper, there would have to be wood. So it'd be like a wood burning outline. I like that idea. Didn't didn't I see like the actual printer inkjet per ounce was actually more costly than gold. Yes. It is the most expensive substance yes. in the world. Because they have to go to like the middle of the ocean and mine it. Mm. They have to get it out of octopuses. Oh, is they that have to what milk it? the octopus eye. Does it have nipples? <laughs> Apparently. Oh, okay. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, Andrew from the Cincinnati Comic Expo is supposedly showing up. Yeah, we believe it. We're going we see to see it. We're going to. He's going to be and, here. And Justin's going to be here, too. Well, come on. Let's not be ridiculous. <laughs> he's like, he's like uh, Pip's benefactor. We really don't know who he is. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Uh, but, yes, he will it's be here. Mrs. Havisham. Isn't no, it? don't have any great expectations. <laughs> that was a good book. It was. Uh, let's see. Here. It was a terrible book. It was the worst book I ever attempted to read. <laughs> <laughs> How about The Grapes of Wrath? Better than Great Expectations. I love Grapes of Wrath. Really did, do. Did you want to sue because of the title? Yes, false advertising. Oh, like the never ending story? Like the never ending <laughs> story. It's a good call. You know what? We probably could do that now. I wonder if we could. Hmm. I'm thinking, yeah, based off of uh, the suit that you can sue movie companies mm-hmm. because their trailers are inaccurate, I think we should be able to sue every. Fast food place that shows a picture of a burger, and our burgers don't look like that when we get them. Can't, couldn't sue P- uh, Pizza Hut. I think they actually do, like, real pictures. So that's the only place we couldn't sue. I will say Pizza Hut's pizza does look like their ads. Is, is that good or bad? I don't know. Oh, okay. Okay. It's very dry. Like the dough. Which I get. Oh, there. What? Pizza Hut's one of the greasiest pizzas out there. Their pizza is greasy, but like the dough part, it's too doughy. Too doughy. Don't like it. Okay. Just tell you. Yeah. What part of the pizza are you eating the grease from? Well, the top of the the cheese, the pepperoni, that's all grease. But like when you get to the crust end, like you get the thick crust, it's too thick. (laughs) What the fuck are you talking about? (laughs) The pizza crust on the pizza. You know what? Fuck off, right? You know what, Jim? Take that outline back. Take it back. That's yours. 
That's yours now. Forget it. You lost your opportunity there. Anyways. So that was pizza talk. <laughs> On the Hobie Network. Oh, my goodness. Um, let's have a breath of silence, though, first. Several. Andy Worshing. Uh, from Bosch, 24. Uh, she was uh, the serial killer in The Rookie. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, we spoiler alert. Uh, did you? Are you? I'm so far behind on that show. Well, I will tell you, we're slowly catching up, and uh, they have a final piece with her in it this year. Mm-hmm. And I wonder if it's because she knew something, or yeah, I mean, she's been battling it. Yeah, for almost three um, years now. So we actually watched it last night. And we're like, oh, that's rough. Yeah. Um, she was great as though as a serial killer in it. She was. Uh, I do like that she has, like, minions, though, with her. Like, mm-hmm. she has ac- acolytes, is what she calls them. Yeah, minions, they're, they're yellow. Some of them have one eye. Stuart is one of them. Mm-hmm. Kevin's got the one eye, I think. I think you're right. I think you're right. My youngest knows those guys. Uh, but, yeah, Breath of Silence She's there. Star Trek, too, if I'm not mistaken. I think she was in Star Trek. Uh, Breath of Silence for uh, Cindy Williams. Yes. Shirley I just, Feeney. Mm-hmm. I was just getting to uh, get into that. She's with the great boo boo kitty in the sky. Uh, yeah, there was there was a decent amount this year uh, this week. Uh, we got any other ones? I think there was someone else, right? There was one other. Um, there was some sports related person. Billy um, Packer. Oh, Billy Packer. Bobby uh, Bobby Orr. Bobby Orr. Bobby Orr. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Of. Oh, it was in Hall. No, Bobby Hall. Or Bobby. Yeah, yeah Bobby Hall. Yeah, Bobby, Bobby Hall. Hall. Not Orr. <laughs> wrong, Bobby. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right sport. The, um, wrong, Bobby. The original Wednesday from the Adams family. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. who it is. Yes. You're right. Yep. She was only like 64 too. Mm-hmm. She was young. Uh, Annie was only 45. Yeah. She uh she had cancer uh, for the last two years, I think, is what uh, they said <clears throat> for that. Fuck cancer. Yes. So big breath of silence <sighs> for all of them. Uh, so there you go. Um, let's see here. Um, anybody watch anything this week? Anything? Anything? Mm. No? Let's see. Um, I continued watching Legend of Vox Machina. Still enjoying it? Still enjoying it. Oh, it's mm. getting better. Where okay. can I watch that at? Amazon, Amazon Prime. Prime. Okay. Um, I started watching uh, Suits. The USA show? The USA show. Wow. When USA had TV shows? Exactly. When USA uh, existed? Are they still yeah. around? Uh, yeah, they're raw. Wrestling. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, well, something's got to come back to replace the Chris Lee shows. <laughs> oh, oh the, maybe that's why I didn't watch it, because Chris Lee was always on. No. Never really watched Suits before. Oh, wait. Isn't Mrs. Chris Lee already being transferred to, like, a uh, mental health unit or something? She didn't last, like, one day where she was at. I didn't hear yet. I, nah. So she wasn't in Shawshank because they would just beat her until no. she I'll died. Know, I'll know in a couple weeks when I get the letter yeah. back from her. All right. Uh, we've been pen pals. <laughs> but uh, I guess like on uh, YouTube or uh, Facebook, they mm-hmm. have like these little short clips or whatever, advertising things. Little clips of suits like popped up and I'm like, oh, maybe I should give this show a try. And it's Meghan Markle, so I'll watch this. I'm Meghan. I do like, I do like that you're getting advertisements on Facebook for suits. And what USA marketing guy goes, hey, this show's been off the air for like five years. Should we put advertise? Yeah, put it on Facebook. I don't think USA is advertising it. Oh, I'd be better if it was. Uh, that is on, I'm Tubi? trying to remember. No. Flexi? No, no, it, it, it might be. Uh, Peacock. It Freebie? Might, it might be Amazon. Peacock? It's Tubi? None of those because I haven't watched any of them. Freebie? You haven't Hulu? watched Freebie or Tubi or Hulu? Paramount? Voodoo? I'm surprised it's not on Peacock. Um, <laughs> it's not Paramount. That's where the rest of the uh, USA Network yeah. shows are on. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking it is, uh, uh, the, yeah, as I said, the Amazon. Um, <laughs> free preview? <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you remember, like, they had some decent shows back then. I think we actually linked it on our Facebook page, the. Mr. Bad Ideas. Yeah. Wait, Saved by the Bell? No, no. It was Suits. No. Oh. They had Mr. Robot. That was popular that was for a couple awesome of years. Show. Oh, I didn't realize that was... You can USA. watch it on Peacock TV, Prime Video, Voodoo, or Apple TV. Okay. I watch it on Prime Video. Um, Psych. Psych was on that ch- USA. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, White Collar. White yeah, Collar. White Collar. What about Monk? 
Did they have Monk, Monk? was Monk. on there? Yeah, there they had go. Monk. Burn Notice, great show. Oh, so good. Burn Notice. Cover, uh, covert, <laughs> covert Affairs uh, was on it. Piper Parabell. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shooter. Shooter was a That sort. was another good show. I think you talked about that. I did. In Plain Sight. I remember That's that one. good show. Oh, God, Royal Pains. Royal Pains. The Doctor with the, in the Hamptons. Silk Stockings. Silk, Silk Stockings. Oh, that, yeah. That, Silk Stockings. The first season yeah. of uh, Royal Pains was really good, and then it got really bad. Like, just so cheesy. Necessary Roughness. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll forget about that. Uh, the Purge. I forgot The Purge was on there for a couple years. The TV I didn't show. I know that they made a TV really? show. Sirens. Yeah. Wow. What happened to USA? Dead Zone. Yeah, Dead mm-hmm. Zone. Paci- Pack Blue. Pacific Blue. Mm-hmm. I think that was Mario Lopez. Probably. Oh, um, I like Airwolf or something on there. Or... Air- <laughs> that was in the 80s, I think. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Airwolf, yep. Yeah, but it was still USA. <laughs> um, no, what happened... Uh, I read. I posted this article a couple months ago, like about it, and basically they never gave a good answer. They basically were like, "Yeah, we're gonna have original programming except for wrestling, because they're like it's cheaper to do the Miz and Mrs. Um, I think reality stuff. Yeah, Re- reality program is yeah. cheap to make. Uh, the Chrisleys. So they said they basically got out of it, and it was like the shows were never bad. Like even Mr. Robot got Christian Slater mm. an Emmy for a, uh, one year. Yeah, and it yeah. it. Brought the world Rami Malik. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. He sang a lot in that show. Really he good. did not. Sure wasn't a musical? And it gave us psych. Yeah. <laughs> Jim's favorite show. I think they keep doing movies for it. They have, th- they have three of them. Did, aren't they coming out with a new one, too? They just did. Oh, did they? Okay. Uh, the only show that they make right now like that's not reality is Chucky, which is amazing that they have Chucky on there. Yeah. The Child's Plays. I never, I mean, I didn't even know that that existed. It's actually a pretty popular show, and it's like, so you got one show, wrestling, and reality TV. It's just weird, like... What do they fill the rest with? Reality TV. TV. Reality TV run. Commercial, uh, I mean, reruns of everything else. Ridiculousness. <laughs> oh, that's some TV, my that's bad. That's some TV. De- deliciousness. Deliciousness moved over there. Um, Only from 8 to 9. Yes, right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm trying to see what their schedule is here. Hold on. Um, Chicago PD reruns. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Lots reruns. of Chicago PD reruns. Law- no, just PD or all the Chicago series? As of now, it's just PD. Uh, Law and Order SVU. Dum-dum. Oh, they do a bunch yeah! of NBC uh, reruns. Sweet. NBC, yeah. Uh, NCIS Los Ange- Angeles. NCIS. Dum-dum. Yeah! Wow. Um... Lots of Law and Order on tomorrow. Um, yeah, so th- that's that's it. WWE NXT. NXT. There you go. Is on Wednesday. Yeah, you know, it sounds like you know, like a programming director for USA. They just hired some guy and he just like gave up. He's like, nah, fuck it. Oh, Barmageddon. What's, e- what's the easiest way I can fill twenty four hours in seven days? Yeah. <laughs> How can I make my job easier? I do not yeah. know Barmageddon. Barmageddon is. Select, select, select. Uh, Barmageddon is a uh, country show, or they're in a bar, they play bar games, and there's a country guy doing it, Luke Bryan, maybe? Oh, yeah, it's horrible. Oh, I did oh. see that. Oh, I, I saw, like, one episode, and it was really bad. I don't know who does it, though. I was thinking this was, like, a, a John Taffer uh, ripoff or something. Shut it down! What channel is that on? Paramount. Uh, uh, here's oh. MTV's uh, programming for Wednesday, February 1st. <laughs> okay. 12 a.m., Ridiculousness. 12.30, Ridiculousness. Wait, what channel is this? 1 a.m., Ridiculousness. One thirty, oh. Ridiculousness. 2 a.m., Ridiculousness. 2.30, Ridiculousness. 3 a.m., Ridiculousness. 3.30, Ridiculousness. You can skip past the Ridiculousness. 4 a.m., Ridiculousness. 4.30, 5. Keep going. 5.30, 6. 6.30 a.m., Ridiculousness. <laughs> When's Teen Mom 2 reunion? All the way. <laughs> okay, we, we go th- all the way till 7 p.m. Ridiculousness. Uh, 7.30, Ridiculousness. 8 o'clock, The Challenge. <laughs> 9.30, yeah. Ridiculousness. 10, Ridiculousness. 10.30, Ridiculousness. 11, Ridiculousness. 11.30, Ridiculousness. Yeah. And this was from the channel that was on the cutting edge of... Great programming and informing, you know, our social, you know, our current media, whatever. Oh yeah, and and they pretty much started the uh, 
you know, reality, term VJ, reality, reality, the reality you know, television, video disc jockey, and they can, re- they can reality. show reality television. It's true. The real, the was it uh, real, real world, real world road rules. Mm-hmm. They created the genre that destroyed it. They created the genre that destroyed itself. Now they itself. just have one guy looking at videos from the internet. <laughs> yeah. Well, hold on. He's got his lackey secretary who can laugh obnoxiously. <laughs> And the one guy who's a disc jockey who really isn't. He's Time just, out. He just you look like play. I'm milking a cow yeah, instead just, of actually I'm, I'm doing demonstrating what the disc jockey does. He presses play and he goes forward, backwards, forward, backwards, play, stop, play. Stop, that, that. Uh, you know what? I'll be honest. And he's got a 50 year old guy who thinks he's 18 years old wearing a stupid fucking baseball hat. Like, you know, let me tell you something. It was like wrong baseball oh, hats. <laughs> You, you need to curve your bill. Oh, you can't okay. Be 50 years old and have a flat bill. Um, Jim, stop it. <laughs> I don't know what you guys are whispering about, but we it makes bad. Oh, radio. sorry, sorry. Moving on. Anyways. Our benefactor has arrived. What do you think? Somebody. Are you saying you need to go let him in? Yeah, somebody needs to go let him in. <laughs> Brian's on the job. Best intern in the business. Take his outline. Take his outline. <laughs> There you See, you're asking me to do it, and with this chair, the way the air space is, it's hard for me to get out. Well, I'm it's harder s- for Jeff to get out, but... <laughs> I like to see Jeff get out. That, that would be tough. Well, no, but, that's get off. Oh. Jeff, what was in your uh, Jeff box this month? Hello, Jeff. Fruit roll-ups. This, this week? Yep. Okay. And, and what kind? It might vary. Whatever, okay. Whatever Are you allowed thrown to into use a box? the term fruit roll-ups, or do you have to say fruit leather? <laughs> we used actual fruit roll-ups, okay. so... From 1990? Uh, we don't know when they expired. <laughs> they don't expire. <laughs> but uh, we used them with uh, taco meat. Oh, okay. So you can make a fruit roll-up taco or burrito. Oh, that's nice. You're, hello, Jeff Box this week. Oh, fruit roll-up burrito? Yep. What's the taco seasoning? What's the What's the middle? Is it's it actual beef? Oh, fantastic. <laughs> now, we, we don't flavor the beef in anything other than beef, but... <laughs> <laughs> beef flavored beef? Mm-hmm. I love that. It sounds really good. You brown the beef and you put it in uh, fruit roll-ups. Better question. Do they still make fruit roll-ups? Yes. Wow. That's pretty impressive. It takes three to fill you up. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> who's that voice? For those who didn't hear that, Andrew just said it takes three fruit roll-ups well, to fill you welcome, up. Welcome, Andrew. If welcome. I, if I didn't know any better, I thought he was talking about the uh, healthy choice uh, frozen dinners because the lean cuisine. Yeah, <laughs> it's definitely not the Hello Jeff box. Yeah. Now you're gonna have to lean in and talk. You and Blake are sharing a mic. Okay. Um, so you gotta lean in. We still can't hear you when you're that far away. Say Hello. hi. Hi. There you go. Okay. Uh, don't be afraid to talk loud. Do you want to introduce? Uh, Andrew's here from the Cincinnati Comic Expo. Yay! Uh, welcome, Andrew. Welcome. Uh, I'll be honest, I'm shocked you're here. <laughs> 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 I am shocked. We usually see you like three times a year, uh, all three days on the expo, for or three, two of them. For three minutes a day. Yes, yes. <laughs> you're zipping by in your little Porsche in the, uh, in the expo. We're like, hey, who's that guy? He, uh, he is a little busy. Is he? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's like it. running an entire expo takes effort or something, Jim. <laughs> well, the only thing I saw him doing was driving William Shatner around over the place that's and then true. running after <laughs> William Shatner after he stole his little cart. <laughs> William, I love you on Star Wars. You were awesome. <laughs> kind of an embarrassing moment. Uh, oh, did you tell that to him? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> were you allowed to call him Bill? Andrew? Um, I always just called him Mr. Shatner. Oh, okay. Okay. Respect. Uh, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that just reminded me. It's going to take, throw in a story here. Okay. About when uh, we were working at a job and the uh, president of the company was coming through. Mm-hmm. And the, uh, the, the, man- <coughs> the manager of the store is like, all right, now he's going to come in here. So, you know, call him Mr. I'm not going to say his name out here. Call him Mr. Mr. Smith. Whatever. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Smith and Mr. Mr. Thomas are going to be here. Yeah, so, so be respectful, blah, blah, blah. They woke up to me, and I'm like, hey, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, oh, brother now. <laughs> because I had met him in the past before I even worked for the company. Did your boss get mad? He His eyes lit up when I said, 
hey, Bill. <laughs> And then you were fired. Uh, uh, and no, and then I had a good talk, and he realized, oh, maybe it's a good thing that you might know somebody who's higher up. Oh, that was different than in my story when he came in. <laughs> when he came in, and they come in, hey, Jim, I'm like, hey, Bill, how's it going? And then we talk, and then the manager at the time just looked at me like, what are you doing? <laughs> Don't I'm, make eye contact. And I'm like, I've met this guy numerous occasions away from work. Well, it was actually in Pittsburgh for the Pittsburgh Marathon. I was running for the Dick's uh, mm-hmm. corporate-sponsored team. What? You gave the name of the company, oh, Jim? No, it's Richards. It's Richards. Uh-huh. Richards. <laughs> but um, uh, I was running for the corporate team, and I, so I got to meet all the big wigs, and they liked me. Oh, so, how dare you? Don't make eye contact. I can't even make eye contact with Andrew right now. <laughs> and that's when the manager said, "I need to fire Jim because they like him more than me." <laughs> um, that's not far from the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I think we told the story. <laughs> uh, Andrew, would you like to tell us who's coming to the Comic Expo September twenty second through twenty fourth? Make sure your mic's working too. Hobie is. We'll we'll be there. Hobie is. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Give us one name first. Okay, well, it was announced on face. Oh, get closer. <laughs> <laughs> Just get as close as you can. I'm getting abused. Um, we have the legendary Jim Lee mm-hmm. Whoa. With, with the inker Scott Williams. Whoa, and, both. And his colorist, Alex Sinclair. Jeez, old Pete. Wow. So, anybody wants to get autographs on your books, one shot, get them all. All my 90s X Men books are now worth something. And that is a Saturday only? Saturday only, but Alex will be there Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Okay. But nice. Jim and Scott will be there just Saturday. That's odd because Jim called me today and he's going to be on the podcast that Tuesday. <laughs> he's coming into the, uh, the here. That's a rumor. Uh, uh, rumor is not confirmed. No, no. In no. fact, I think Jason is making another story up. I think I am. Uh, that's that, a big one. That never happens. I like that. I like that. No, Jim's somebody we've always wanted. Mm-hmm. It's always been on the list. Mm-hmm. And this year we're just able to make it happen. It's very nice. That would be September 23rd, that Saturday. Um, that would be nice. Okay. Should I get my image comic signed? Should get your image co- Do you have Rob Layfield coming? Well, no. <laughs> Not that we know of yet. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I got pockets. Uh, uh, what, Stormwatch. Jim Lee did Stormwatch. Yeah, I've got all this. Uh, Batman. He did Batman. Uh, I believe Hush. Did he do the, uh, the Hush storyline? I believe that is correct. Yes, yeah. that's correct. Good story. Is, very um, good storyline. When we were promoting Jim, mm-hmm. you know, I wanted to throw some X Men books mm-hmm. on the picture for him to promote, you know, some of his X Men work because everybody loves the X Men work that he did. Yeah, but he's the he's the big guy at DC Comics. Yeah, <laughs> so probably shouldn't put the the Marvel on. No, but I so much wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> but he pretty much did the number one selling comic in the history of comics. Now, That's granted, it's because they had like six alternate covers. Doesn't matter. I think they actually show, uh, sold it on uh, Home Shopping Network, too. I think they did. They did. Yeah. Eight million copies. That's unbelievable. That's a Eight lot. million copies went to two million people. Doesn't matter. There's still a lot of copies. Um, that's, now, just, that's just good marketing. Yeah. I've got five copies of my own, so. <laughs> and you figure now, like, a good book, like, a popular book sells 100,000 copies. That's unbelievable. Now, obviously, yeah. it's a different time, you know. You also have digital and all that stuff now, too. But, I mean, now... You're happy if you're, you hit 60000 One of the local comic book shops had one of the X-Men posters from that mm. time period that was still hanging on the walls, totally sun bleach, faded. Did you get it? No, no. Oh. But <laughs> you just look at it and just, yeah, that was another time. It was yeah. great to be in comics. and Yeah. Uh, open up a comic book store now probably would not be the best thing. Not right now. Um, right, Paper Street's. Paper doing st- a heck of a, a lot of business. I will agree. That is true. So um, got to make sure you're in on collectibles and games yeah. and just yeah, not comics. You, yeah. you have to diversify. Yep. You got Funko Pops. Whatnot has been a huge streaming service for a lot of those Funko and, mm-hmm. and comic books. Um, vinyl records, too. There's a ton of Whatnot streams people mm-hmm. selling that stuff. Jimmy has like three. I think he does three streams a week after he closes the shop for like an hour and a half. Really? Yeah. I think you with something like that, you just gotta be ready to move on to that next popular thing, right? Yeah. I mean, you gotta be able to have that in stock, ready to go. Like garbage pail kids. Like if they come back, he's gotta be ready to get those. 
<laughs> well, does he want my garbage pail kids? I can sell them to him. I don't think they're coming yeah. back. <laughs> but that first series of oh, garbage pail is very uh, Jason Basin. Well, what if they are all plastered on the the trapper keeper trapper keeper that I have? Is, is that still good enough? No, but the trapper keeper is worth something. The trapper <laughs> keeper. Is. But what if the trapper keeper's got stickers stuck all over? <laughs> still worth it. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, there was actually a company just came out with t- uh, dress shirts, and they were all based on Trapper Keeper designs. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> and I think it actually shipped in a Trapper Keeper. That's sure awesome. Nice. And the whole shirt is Velcro. <laughs> oh. No buttons. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, last couple of weeks, we've been uh, saying names that could come. So I just need you to say yes or no on these, okay? Um, if there's possibility. Get ready to say no a whole No, 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 no. I think God. Is this a long list? Yes. Army Hammer. Who? <laughs> <laughs> the, the actor turned cannibal, Army Hammer? <laughs> Alleged cannibal. Alleged cannibal. <laughs> that means no. <laughs> uh, Gal Gadot. No. Oh, oh. Sorry. <laughs> oh. Sorry. Oh. You, uh, Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. I did say Brad Pitt Matt, one week. Uh, he was the vanisher. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be the perfect picture to get him to sign, too. Get Brad Pitt. Come on. <laughs> you know, you could probably get Alec Baldwin pretty cheap right now. Ooh. Hey, he was in the shadow. He was Ooh. in the shadow. He's in a jail cell next week. Come on. No. Is he, he in jail? He was not ar- yet, but he is going to be charged. He was formally he charged formally today. Charged. Oh, yeah. he was formally charged mm-hmm. today? Uh, you know, the funny thing is, though, like, I don't even know why. I was reading an article about that with Alec Baldwin, and I was like, man, he was in the shadow. I remember that was supposed to be a big thing. I literally went to a deep dive of 45 minutes of looking at the old shadow toys they made back in the 1990s for the movie. They had a lot of shadow mo- TV or tie-ins. I was like, man. Well, they thought I it was going to be... they made shadow toys. Oh, there, there are some good ones. Uh, oh, I think McDonald's probably had them or some... No, I'm fast talking like the actual three yeah. and three quarter. But one. I'm sure the fast food restaurants oh, yeah. had tie-ins, and there wasn't many for the Phantom. The Phantom did Slam not. Evil. Slam Evil. Billy Zane did not get many uh, tie-ins. That's, That's because a shame. they realized it was going to be bad before he they fought released pirates. It. it was awesome. Well, everyone's got to fight pirates at some point in time. I mean, Captain Phillips did. I'm the captain. <laughs> I'm the captain now. <laughs> um, I remember my dad was really excited about seeing the Shadow because he used to grow up on the radio show. And, like, I remember him renting that movie and was so excited about it. And we were watching it, and it was like, oh, no, this is not what you were looking for. He never got excited about another movie ever again. Uh, He got excited about Quigley Down Under, and I'm not kidding. I think he was really a fan of that one, too. Good day! Good day, mate. So that's who the fan was. (laughs) (laughs) Says a lot about you, Jason. Thank you. Thank you. Lack of movie taste. (laughs) I'm, at least it's inherited, I guess. Yes, yes, yes it is. Um, okay, so September 22nd through 24th, uh, VIP tickets went on sale, correct, Andrew? Yes, and for a limited time, they're they're pretty well discounted. Okay. Whoa. Jump on them now. That usually lasts, you know, about a month or less. Mm-hmm. So you want to hop on that now and save some money on the VIP. And it comes this year, we're doing a little different. Uh, this year you get a T-shirt with the package. You still get in early to the show, mm-hmm. early entry, um, but the main thing is this year you get a T-shirt. We used to give like a voucher, but now we're just giving you a T-shirt. So you got to pick your size when you buy the ticket. What's the T-shirt of? Huh? Can you say that? What's the T-shirt? OB? Well, there'll be uh, T-shirts. <laughs> History of bad ideas. T-shirts. <laughs> we can make that happen. <laughs> it could be like uh, what's that horrible show? Charlie Chaplin and the Factory. What's the Charlie and Chocolate Factory? Charlie Chaplin. Charlie, 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 Charlie Chaplin. Chaplin. Charlie Chaplin and the Factory. I love that band. <laughs> uh, 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 they're industrial music, right? That's going to be Charlie Chan. Yeah. Anyway. So, how about this? We give you three gold Hobie shirts, Andrew. And if somebody gets one of those instead of another shirt, they win something. I don't know what they win. (laughs) <laughs> you win a tour of shirt, art. not shark. Oh, shirt. <laughs> shirt. You, you do not win sharks. No. Yeah, that's right. Three gold Hobie t-shirts out of that, and they get to give a top five list on the podcast. Ooh. I like it. They get to give a top five. I like it. And a tour of the second floor. 
<laughs> That's free anyway. <laughs> shut up, shut up. And they get to work the line. <laughs> hey, don't put my wife out of work. <laughs> Just so she can eat. Oh, okay. Hey, you know what? That reminds me, Andrew. I got a bone to pick with you. Oh. <laughs> you better start talking to those costume, costume contest people. <laughs> Moving on. With us. Moving <laughs> on. Use out the major hall. All right. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Uh, Pass your notes along. (laughs) (laughs) Got a lot of problem with you people. (laughs) The Aaron of grievances. Next, the feats of strength. (laughs) Uh, So did anybody else watch anything? (laughs) (laughs) So that's our suits talk for the night. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Any any other guests you want to announce? Um, we are announcing uh, another guest tomorrow. Okay. Um, if you go to the homepage, you'll see who it is. Okay. Can you tell us now? The Hobie Spectacular? Can you give us a hint? Does it start with Brad and Ant and with hey. it? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So Brad Pritt is not there this week here. Okay. <laughs> Loved him in suits. Yeah, but the guest list for this year is coming along nicely this year. I think everybody's going to be very happy. Okay. Uh, so no Pritt. Okay. No Pritt. No, no bra Pritt. Bra Pritt. Okay. No Brad Pitt. Sorry. Oh, what? I just okay. uh, oh. say that out there now. He was in Bullet Train? Come on. Yeah, we consider a name movies he was in. That's not going to change. I don't think that's going to help. <laughs> Fight Club. <laughs> just call up his agent and go, hey, he was in Bullet Train. Can he come? <laughs> Hey, we're doing a Thelma and Louise special this year. Can we get Brad Pitt? Susan Sarandon going to be there? Maybe. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Gina Davis? No. no. <laughs> Love Susan Sarandon in White Palace. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Star Wars guys were always cool. Yeah. Um, yes, we do have some amazing Star Wars guests lined up for this year. Okay. Um so, yeah, September 22nd through 24th. Get your tickets at CincinnatiComicExpo.com. We can actually say, Jeff, that they're available now. They are available now. Yes. And we can also say that Jim Lee is scheduled to appear. Look at that. And maybe Mr. Pritt. I don't know yet. So we'll find out. <laughs> no, no, it's been confirmed he will not be. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. I don't uh, know about you guys, but I am... When they when David, who is in charge of our comic book guest, mm-hmm. told me that Jim Lee was done... The deal was done. I, I about lost my mind. That's a big one. Do you think he's the biggest uh, comic book artist you've had since Stanley? Yes. Yeah. Easily. Well, bigger than Stanley because Stanley really wasn't an artist. Well, that's. <laughs> he was more of an. I author, meant in the comic bo- in the comic book oh. realm. <laughs> I shared it with some friends. Mm-hmm. You know what they said? Is that Stan Lee's brother? <laughs> <laughs> and you know what you said? So these were not comic book uh, friends. <laughs> you know what you no. say? Yes. 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 <laughs> the answer is always yes. yes. You're not invited. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can buy a ticket. Yeah, you can buy a ticket. <laughs> he didn't have a speaking part in Mall Rats. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and if you get a gold yellow uh, Hobie shirt this year, let us know for a free shirt. Um, yeah, if, if you stumble across one. <laughs> what about you, if Jim Lee wants one? We got some. What do you need? What do you need? I hope he likes small. You know what? Because <laughs> you're, you're a good friend, Andrew. Um, if Jim Lee wants a tour of the second floor, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. We'll make I think it. Jim Lee's going to be spending a lot of time on the second floor. Okay, I'm just checking. I'm just checking. Uh, I mean, I guess we'll make it happen. I mean, Brian, could you do that? Oh, yeah. no. Yeah. Jason's not allowed to ask him any questions. We need somebody else moderating that one. Oh, moderate. I was like, yeah. what, am I going to stand up in the crowd? <laughs> yeah. No, you, you can't we'll, moderate a Jim Lee panel. No, that's fine. We'll, 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 we'll go ahead and pencil Brad in for that one. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you all, if, um, if you're going to get, like, one book signed mm-hmm. by Jim Lee, oh, what is it? Uh, I, I got my graphic novel of Batman Hush. I would probably have him sign. I love that series. I, got, I probably would go with the collector's edition of X-Men number one. Would he sign? I mean, he'll, he'll sign Marvel, right? Oh yeah, oh, even yeah he DC. did the work. I mean, yeah. come on, yeah. Okay, I'm just making sure his Since... name is on it. Well, yes, that's true. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like I said, but I would be tempted for uh, some of his creator books or whatever that he did with uh, 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 the image. Image. 
but I don't know. I don't know. I, I was a big fan of his on X Men is where when I was starting. So it would be interesting to see what hit the what book he signs the most of at conventions. Well, we can ask get, that. Let, let's get Doug to keep a running count. He'll just stand next to Jim Lee <laughs> the just, whole time. And just have a tally sheet. <laughs> a <laughs> clicker. A clicker. <laughs> Left side. That's <laughs> <X-Men one. laughs> one. DC, Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it's going to be the Extinction Agenda hardcover that I bought. Okay. Ah, okay. I got Rob, Rob on it when he came to the show. Mm-hmm. So now I get to add Jim. Oh, yeah. Especially, yeah, with the crossover and you, you've got the multiple artists or whatever in that. Yeah. That was when I was really starting to get into comics on my own without my dad spoon-feeding me G.I. Joe and Archie books. What's wrong with G.I. Joe? And then, and then uh, my brother's older friend, uh, Chris, I went over his house, and he knew I read comics. And then he pulled out. Playboy? <laughs> no. <laughs> they have funny comic strips in Playboy. But Playboy has some videos. good articles. <laughs> Russ Heath art. <laughs> but he, um, <laughs> he pulled out some of uh, the Jim Lee stuff, said, this guy's amazing. I look at his artwork, and I was just like, wow. And then I was just like, I read one of the X-Men books that he had, and he goes, like, yeah, this stuff's the best. you got to be buying this stuff. And then um, went home, and I was like, i got to get myself some Jim Lee. And then um, bagged my mom after a week. She finally took me up to the comic book store, bought X Men two seventy one with my own money. I think it was like a dollar twenty five or something. Mm-hmm. And then that started. That was that whole crossover with all the artists and uh, that are all big names. Yeah. And uh, and when you're a kid, you don't have any money. Correct. I got to tell my mom, no, I don't need this book. Apparently, it's connected to this book, and it's also <laughs> in this book. Yeah. So I got to get yeah. all these books yeah. now. Yeah, I, I don't need the next X Men book right now. I need to get the X Factor book and then X Force after that. So you know, yeah. I you know why you need an X Factor. Cyclops was the leader. Not at that time. Oh, that's right. He was still yeah with that. Damn it. Ha! Damn it. <laughs> Havoc was so there. That was always my biggest disappointment. I picked up X Men. <laughs> And then it was like, oh, Cyclops is no longer part of this. He was the leader in the Dark Phoenix graphic novel I just read. Yeah. Seven years later, he's not the, damn it, he's not the leader. I love Cyclops. Yeah, for some reason, Cyclops is his favorite X-Men. Of all the X-Men, Of all the X-Men, I always always preferred his brother. Ugh, God. What was, um, that was Havoc, right? That was Havoc, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because that's at the end of the X Men, ex- the Extinction Agenda. Those two are, are fighting mm-hmm. him on the rooftop, uh, Hodge. Oh yeah. Well, uh, speaking of DC, we'll have DC news later on too. We uh, that just came out today, the DC movie universe. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, is that with the Shang? Um, James uh, Gunn. James Gunn. Yeah. 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 Shang's yeah. brother. So we'll uh, <laughs> release Tommy that. is nephew. <laughs> Did you guys watch that? Because I, I yes, saw some clips of it. It seemed. I'll get to it. We'll get to it here. Oh, it's on the list. Yeah. Well, no, but I changed some yeah, stuff. Yeah, he'll send us uh, an outline and then, and then change, change it. it. You know, well, you know what? The former intern still does a great job on the uh, outline, and Good then job, Jason changes Thank you. it. Uh, we did have a Twitter poll of the week this week at nobody Bad Ideas Podcast. Because no one voted on it. It said 0% on no, all No, no, it's not updated. <laughs> I got the updated numbers. So that what? means nobody voted? No, I no. got the updated numbers. <laughs> God. How many people vote? 11. <laughs> no, we had more. Thank you. Four? 14. <laughs> no, we had more. Okay, you know what, assholes? <laughs> so one troll could like really ruin You only can vote once, okay? Don't you know how Twitter works? <laughs> it's, it's the one person with 14 accounts. Elon Musk <laughs> voted 37 times, okay? Are you happy? <sighs> Pat Cable voted 14 times? <laughs> yes. What match do you want Sami Zayn to perform in at WrestleMania 39 since he turned on Roman Reigns this week and it was... What?! French Kiss, beautiful at the Royal Rumble this week. Beautiful. Blake watched it with me. Uh, Sorry, Sam- we had 23 votes. Yeah. <laughs> That's almost double. To be fair, I did realize, shit, we don't have a Twitter poll of the week this week. <laughs> I'm really like you bad do at it. every week? I know. <laughs> uh, we had Sammy and Kevin Owens versus Jimmy and Solo. Sammy versus Reigns. Uh, Zane and Jay. No. Versus Jimmy and Solo and Sammy and KO versus the Usos. Can you do me a favor yeah. and explain to me who Jimmy and Solo are? Uh, Jimmy is uh, Jimmy Uso. Okay. Jay Uso may have left the bloodline of Roman Reigns, Jimmy Uso, Jay Uso, uh, and Solo. 
uh, who is a uh, uh, cousin, I think. Okay, so oh, no, they're all cousins. So the Usos, Reigns, and Solo, Solo are all in a group. And they're, Sammy was. They're all family. Oh. They're all family. Mi, uh, mi familia. Yeah. Ooh. Um. So in last place is Sammy and Kevin Owens versus the Usos. That's where it's going to people. Uh, for the ti- titles. Sammy and KO versus Jimmy and Solo at 9%. Uh, J- Sammy and Jay versus Jimmy and Solo is 35%. And winning Sammy versus Reigns is at 48%. Uh, but the rumor today is that it's actually taking place at Elimination Chamber because Sammy has no tr- shot in hell of winning. Because why would you go with the hot ticket right now, Brian? Never worked for Daniel well, Bryan. If, if you were going with the hot ticket, you're going to go with Cody Rhodes. That's what the WrestleMania main event is. So I just found out who these people are, but I'm cheering for a Sammy J versus Jimmy Solo matchup. Okay. I, I like it when, you know, mm-hmm. more than when it just breaks up the family. And yeah. It's cut in half. and The many matches you and Jim have had. Uh, in oh, we, all the time. Yep, for the Cruiserweight title. Mm-hmm. Still holding on to that baby. Uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, I think that's everything. Um, I didn't watch anything. Oh, what did you watch this week? <laughs> the Royal Rumble. Good job. Did you like it? <laughs> no. Oh, I liked it. Okay. Okay. What did you think of that pitch black match? Uh, that was awful. That was horrible. Does that mean they turned the lights out and you couldn't see anything? Pretty much, yes. It was uh, a black light match. Bray Wyatt <laughs> versus LA Knight. Sponsored by Mountain Dew Pitch Black. And he's not kidding. Oh. When you wrote that on our message board, I was like, no. And then oh, I, yeah. I got home because we didn't get home till like nine, 9 o'clock, and I turned it on and watched the rumble. Then I got to that match, I was like, oh, God, it really is sponsored by Mountain Dew. Oh, okay. yeah. I like how the whole show was sponsored by Applebee's. <laughs> when I think wrestling... I think Applebee's. Eating good in the neighborhood. Oh, yeah. So, Blake, were you excited about it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they can't hear you without the mic. You can move it. I can tell you if the mic dies. It's okay. In shocking news, if yes. Cody Rhodes won. <laughs> yeah. Shocking news. Rhea Ripley won. Mm-hmm. But I'm okay I mean, with it. She's the first female to, to go the distance. Yeah. And, the, you know, and that's, that's big for them, for, that, ex- for the division. I like her. I like right, her. She's incredible. As long as Nia Jax didn't win. Oh, that's what I was cheering for. That sloppy wrestler. Jeez, oh, I liked when Beth Phoenix beat up R- Rhea Ripley in the men's match. Yeah. Yeah, that was... I like that. That was interesting. My daughter goes, who's that? <laughs> I was like, she's the original Rhea Ripley. Uh, mm-hmm. She could, she could uh, fight anyone. How about Gunther going... The, whole, the distance and then losing. Hour and 11 minutes. Mm-hmm. Very impressive. I like him. And he gets I've... beat by the guy who was 30th. Yeah. Really not Cody. fair. Oh, boo. Gunther from Friends? Yes, it's Gunther from Friends. <laughs> he came back from the dead to wrestle in WrestleMania. Zombie or Gunther came back. Royal Rumble. Cool. His real name is Walter. Mm-hmm. Well, not his real name. His last wrestling name was, was Walter. Walter. Yeah. Uh, my my, my uh, two youngest were really excited about it. My daughter really likes it, and my six-year-old does, too. I was not excited for Booker T. <laughs> what about the MGs? He, he did a spinner rooney and then out. Yes. Yes. I was not excited by the three-and-a-half-mile-long ramp to get into the ring. <laughs> I, was, I was almost completely sold that Otis was going to get lapped going into the ring. <laughs> Otis was not excited about it either. He was not. <laughs> <laughs> Big old Otis was not, no. They didn't give Otis a scooter? No, they did. they should have had those rings from WrestleMania three and not update it the same ones and just I'm, see how I'm long. I'm kind of surprised they didn't make them do the worm all the way down because <laughs> <laughs> that's all you've got. Uh, Triple H, that's a long walkway. Just do the worm, Otis. You're fine. You're good. You're fine. I give you fifty grand. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, you cannot do the worm coming in because then someone will beat the crap out of you and you'll never make it to the ring. Oh, that happened to Rey Mysterio. Yeah, his son beat him up, Dom. He was announced at seventeen and never came. Into the match. Never showed up. So I he did, won because he never got eliminated. I did like Baron Corbin got beaten up before he got into the ring. Seth Rollins beat him up more, threw him in the ring, and then threw him right out. I was okay I with that. That was the now shortest Is uh, it? Rumble appearance. Huh. Six seconds. Oh, good. It was Butch. And it was uh, Santino, I think, too. So... Um, uh, Pat McAfee came back. That was awesome. So nobody knew that. So Did, did, did you he know- get thrown out? No, he was an announcer. Oh. Uh, the best is that Michael Cole and Corey Graves had no idea who no, was coming back. No, nobody knew. Until, that, until his music hit. And you could tell like Michael Cole was like really excited to have him back. Mm-hmm. He adds a lot to the show. I like him. Yeah. So, there's your Rumble match. Uh, 
Rundown. There's your rumble talk. For the first WWE event mm-hmm. I watched in probably a year and a half, it was average. Yeah. What I, I expected. <laughs> I actually enjoyed it. I, I just like the rumble no matter what. Yeah. It was better than last year is what I thought. I was expecting more people to show up. Yeah, it was too. Uh, Lashley wasn't even... Oh, no, he was in it. Lashley was Lashley in it. was in it. He came yeah. out right after Brock. That's right. That's right. He's a big guy. Um, yeah, Brock Lesnar's very large person. Yeah, I meant Lashley, but yes. So is will, will he be at the expo this year? Uh, do we got wrestler uh, Brock Lesnar at the expo? But Bre- Blake, just say yes. Yes. Awesome. Good job, Andrew. Yeah. Man, Completely what? unconfirmed <laughs> and almost definitely not going to happen. Just asking. I could do the wrestling panels. No problem. Yeah, you could. But but this is also not the Cincinnati Wrestling Expo. But it'll, but you'll be in, like, the smallest room? Yes. Yes. Uh, do you remember uh, when you got hit with a chair? Uh, no, I do not. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely do not. Out of all the things I remember, that is not one of them. <laughs> uh, Blake, give me some listener feedback. All right, that sounds for the bomb listener feedback sponsored by Andrew. Cincinnati Comic Expo is going to give me my own cart this year. <laughs> Your own cart? <laughs> what? A shopping cart? A yeah, motorized gonna, cart. Are, is he having you pick up the garbage around the, the outside? <laughs> it's a drink cart. He has to sell. <laughs> are, you, uh, are you collecting the uh, aluminum cans for grenades? <laughs> Do people associate me with like a mobility scooter and a cart? <laughs> <laughs> the whole around? Does. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I always like putting you next to Blake. It's a really good dynamic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Andrew. All right. <laughs> and Andrew fought Blake every time. <laughs> this is why I don't come back. <laughs> He is aggressively chewing this Hubba Bubba next to me right now. <laughs> He's just firing through this gum. You know, I could be 80,000 other places, but I'm here. <laughs> I could be inking contracts right now, but I'm sitting next to this guy. The, the uh, Cincinnati's most prolific entertainment podcast. That's right. That's right. I could have been signing Frank Stallone, but no, I'm here on Hobie, damn it. <laughs> The better Stallone. <laughs> the better acting Stallone. I could have gotten Gal Gadot if I wasn't here <laughs> dealing with this jackass Blake. <laughs> Where, where's Brad Pitt at when I need him? <laughs> and his 50 restraining orders. <laughs> All right, so if you're not going to get Pitt, you got to get Keanu Reeves. <laughs> It's one or the other. I think the whole episode should just be 55 minutes of us asking him, can you get this guy? Can you get this guy? Hey, you know The Rock? Can you get him? You know what? And then at the end of this, we're fired. Yes. (laughs) You know those interviews you did last year, Jason? He ain't doing them anymore. You know what? You are the tour guide for the second floor. (laughs) No, you're the janitor. (laughs) Before he gets out, he's going to get Brad's number from you. (laughs) (laughs) Who's that other guy? Brad? Yeah, let me have him. (laughs) You hear that, Justin? (laughs) (laughs) Okay, moving on. We got Blake. Yeah, suck it, cinema guys. (laughs) 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 Uh, You know, Andrew, we always start off listener feedback with that one guy. Number one fan? Seven. A-Pans. Can't give yourself a nickname. Formerly known as? Big D. Chili Billy. The Postman. Dad. He Dad. always delivers. <laughs> Doug. Doug. We start off Doug. with Doug. <laughs> like you, or Andrew, Mr. Q, come on. Oh, I know you're wanting me to. From Doug. From Doug. Yeah. 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 We'll edit it later. <laughs> <laughs> no, we won't. <laughs> you're, you're sticking this paper in my face. You're telling me you're talking, but you're not telling me I'm supposed to be reading the paper. <laughs> I have a hot mic. <laughs> We've got the uh, Ron Burgundy teleprompter in here. <laughs> Go fuck yourself, Blake. <laughs> From Doug? <laughs> Blake's finger. <laughs> Blake is poking the paper. <laughs> what Doug want? Go fuck yourself, Comic Expo. Oh, wait, hold on. 
Oh, now we gotta edit that. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, there goes your card. Damn it, the intern, the intern, Brian, the intern wrote that on there. I didn't, you're just gonna get a pair of roller skates <laughs> with square wheels. How are we gonna read? Re- re- <laughs> that freaking feedback, Andrew. This is what we do. <laughs> no, it's really not. <laughs> we usually say his name and then read his question, and then <laughs> 20 minutes to read a guy's comment. <laughs> Welcome to Bob Listener Feedback. <laughs> Sponsored by Andrew at the Cincinnati okay, we Comic Con. Okay, already. <laughs> Move on. We are after from Doug, colon, nanny face off. A just, nanny face off. I just watched this movie this weekend. Nanny face off. You watched watch nanny, nanny face off? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I watched nanny face off. Was that on USA? <laughs> yes, it was. It was well, right that was the clue series. poster. <laughs> And the posters are coming down. <laughs> We're out of control. Okay, what, what's Doug want? Nanny face, face off. off. Okay. Mary Poppins versus Charles in Charge. Are for days and nights. So is this before Charles goes to jail? Yes. Okay. Yes. Charles never went to jail. No, but he probably should have if you listened to Nicole Eggert. Well, moving on. Okay. Uh, I don't even know who that is. She was, she was an on actress Baywatch. who was on, well, she ended up on Baywatch, but she was on Charles in Charge. And Did and she pass away? I don't think so. No, no. she did not. Oh. Okay. Sorry. Her cousin's from Cincinnati. Oh. She Yay. Fam- mm-hmm. She famous? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good story. <laughs> it's not. You know, she probably has a cousin yeah. from Dallas, too. <laughs> probably. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that was probably the most uninteresting story we've ever told on the podcast. My cousin from Cincinnati. That, that's what I'm here for. Uh, we need something, like, just to fill time. Not that it actually lends itself to any good conversation. I'm right there for you. It's taking 40 fucking minutes to get through Doug's question. You know, that's a Paul Blart grandmother lives in Cincinnati. <laughs> oh, she passed away. Lanny Porton's grandmother used to live in Cincinnati before she passed away? Yeah, she lived on the corner of <laughs> Madison and uh, Dana. <laughs> Moving on, uh, I'm picking Mary Poppins because she has magic. That's what but I'm she, she didn't use her magic for anything but giving the kids hallucinations. And she was fighting Scott Bayo, she would. Uh, I'm, I'm, oh, Charles, sorry, I'm going Charles because he's got Buddy that has has his back. Ooh, oh, back. Willie Ames. Yep, Willie Ames. Oh, I saw them in Zapped. He had special Zapped powers. Zapped was good. Yeah, <laughs> Brian, who are you going with? Uh, I guess. Fuck, I don't Nanny know. McPhee. Could you put some effort into this, Brian? Come Mr. on, Mr. Belvedere. Uh, oh, I was going to go with Mr. Nanny. Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan. Mr. Mom. I don't think that's an option, but... Uh, what, it, what about, what was it? Nandor from Guardians of the Galaxy? What's his name? I'm Mary fucking Poppins. Oh, Nandor? <laughs> 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 from Guardians of the Galaxy? Can you go with Princess Leia? <laughs> <laughs> you mean Yondu? <laughs> yeah, Yondu. <laughs> Yondu, Nandor, what's the difference? <laughs> I thought for a second you are like... I was thinking, Andor from Star Wars? No, that's not it. Oh, I thought he was talking about what we do with the shadows. shadows. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Nandor, yeah. Well, you know what? He he was kind of a nanny. He was. For last season. Okay. All right, did we answer the question? I hope we did. (laughs) All right, we need to to go to a higher point now. I went with Mr. Mr. Nanny. Oh, okay. Okay, higher plane. We need to go to a higher plane now. Oh. Oh. Meow God, follow Blake's finger, Andrew. <laughs> from meow God at Meow God. Um, um, what's your final stance on the D&D faux pas? Oh, shit. Will Jason play it now because the only people left that are going to play it are hipsters that want to be special? <laughs> they think Jason's a hipster. Q, evil grin, and an Oreo drop in front of Jason. First off, how dare you? I've played... D&D with Brian for the last six months. Yes, yes. Last six years. As of uh, last week, we realized that was Frogger that you thought was D&D, so... I still say there was dragons in the water that me and Brian beat. Brian? I, 
No, I think I think we were wrong. Do you think we were really playing Frogger? We were just playing Frogger. <laughs> but I named my character. I no one told you to do that. But I did. <laughs> I didn't ever told you. It was to name Lee Coca. Well, here's his failed experiment in the, the DeLorean. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, Andrew. That's right, Andrew. T- t- tell him your strategy for beating Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, so here's what we do. So Brian and I, in the last six, uh, probably two years, we really got into Dungeons and Dragons. And what we do is. I don't believe this. No, we do. <laughs> so what we do is we go into the dungeons, kill the dragons. And then we've beaten the game. Yeah, and then we leave. That's the game, right? That's how you beat the game. We have beaten this game 30 to 8 times in 30 minutes or less. By going into the uh, dungeons, it means crossing the street with all these cars driving by? <laughs> no, 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 no. And no. then defeating the dragons means you're hopping on them and getting to a lily pad. I really don't think we were playing Frogger. <laughs> I really don't. Have you ever beaten Dungeons & Dragons, Andrew? <clears throat> I don't know what Dungeons and Dragons you're even playing. <laughs> it's the new version, the sixth edition. Frogger. <laughs> <laughs> Wizards of the Coast really fucked this up, didn't they? <laughs> yes. Yes, they yes. did. If I, there's so many YouTube videos about it. You can't even stop scrolling on YouTube because it's all OGL. Yes. <laughs> this yeah. OGL, that. Oh, uh, Blake has talked about it the last couple episodes. Yeah. We're going to give him a break this week. Yeah, we, me and Brian just did the talk. We ran well, but, a little ragged. But there's news. There so is? What, hold on. So Apparently, it, okay. they've given up and acquiesced yeah. to all demands. So you know what the lesson is? Never try. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Homer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I hope that answers your question, me out, guys. <laughs> Hopefully that answers it. So they just... <laughs> Abandoned all their plans and just said, "Act like it never happened." Yes, uh, apparently. I mean, I think there's more, something more sinister going on in the background. But they're like, "All right, we are not going to uh, get yeah. rid of the uh, OGL 1.0. We I, are going to open it all up to Creative Commons, and they, we can't backtrack they, on that." They've had to backtrack like three times now, <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's a it'd be a great case study in business marketing. Uh, know your audience, number one. Basically, Wizards Correct. of the Coast woke up one morning and Bobby was in the shower. That's what happened. <laughs> That's what we're doing here. We're done. <laughs> Episode's over. There you okay, go. now I got to make a meme. <laughs> of the Wizards of the Coast going in and seeing Bobby in the shower. Yeah, you open those hands and it's like, hello there. <laughs> <laughs> Trademark, trademark, Tra- trademark, trademark. What else All right, I, moving on. Randall Holt at RJ Holt six six six. He's, he's not, not evil. evil. Just, just handled, handled that, way. that way. That's right. <laughs> Congrats on nine years. How many hours of my life have I wasted listening to you guys? Too much or not enough? Not enough. I don't think too well, much. I'm gonna put it this way: if you listen to us as the background while you're doing other things, it's not a waste at all. Hey. Well, I'm. I think he does. I've talked to him oh. in person. I, so if I you, think he listens to us at work. So if you, if you, it's count, better than paying attention to work. If you figure out four hundred, I did four hundred seventy-five episodes. Okay, we're at four seventy-seven. But four seventy-five. Okay. And an average of an hour and thirty-five minutes per episode. We are now at forty-five thousand minutes. One hundred forty-five thousand one hundred twenty-five minutes. Well, 925,600 minutes. That's how many minutes you've podcasted. That's a lot of (laughs) podcasting. It is. And that doesn't include any times we guessed it on other people's no. podcasts. Brian and I are going to be guessing on everything I learned from movies soon. Everything yeah. I learned from and movies. And that's why we are Cincinnati's most prolific entertainment podcast. That's right. Uh, Andrew has been on for 125 <laughs> minutes. Total. Total? <laughs> yes. That's, that's more minutes than I've actually listened to you. That's true. <laughs> in this podcast. That is true. Nine years, though. It was nine years last week. One of our listeners pointed that out. Yes. So. Mm. It's starting January. Yep. So I have to imagine he's going to get to nine years and then this two hours and probably just quit. Yeah, probably. Probably. <laughs> so our goal is at least episode, what are we on? A thousand. I think episode a thousand. Oh, we're, we're not even halfway there, there yet. Oh, we're halfway. There. We're not halfway Damn there. It. So in, tw- in 12 years, Whoa, we'll be there. Oh, Andrew, in 12 years, there. me and you will be running the Cincinnati <laughs> Wrestling Expo, so I'll be excited about that. Take my bike. <laughs> No. It's plugged in, I swear. 
Uh, what meeples. Else meeples and wine at Meeples and Wine. Mm-hmm. If you have to live in one sci-fi movie world for the rest of your lives, what would it be? I'm having a hard time coming up with this because almost every sci-fi movie world is a terrible world to live in. It's a dystopia. Bob. Oh, Planet Bob. Planet Bob. It's a brand new start. Everything's tight and A. Yep, it's an anus start. No. <laughs> uh, I'm going with Westworld. Uh, the years before it shuts down. <laughs> yeah, nope, nope. Westworld is definitely not a world I would I'm want to live I think in. you could switch different lands. And die. <laughs> well, yeah, but that's, I would leave before that. Well, technically, you, you don't die if you're the paying customer. That's true. Well, you're, you're not supposed hope. to. You're not supposed to. And then you can just get your mind transferred to other people. Yeah. Have you seen season two? <laughs> yes. Have you seen season three? Have you seen season three? <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> no. no. Brian, what world are you going to? Narnia. Mm. Oh, there's death in there, too. That's and you're ruled by a lion. Uh, is Narnia sci-fi though? Sci-fi slash fantasy. Yeah, yeah. I'll allow it. It's my list. It can be whatever it wants to be. <laughs> That's right. This is Hobie, Andrew. We can oh, do whatever we want. It. So Star Wars will be all right then, because we know that. Shut it! What? Shut it! What? What's that? They said they said it, sci-fi, a fantasy, not space uh, opera. Oh, never heard of it. Andrew, where are you living? Sci-fi world. Okay, if it's sci-fi, not fantasy. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to go with Rylos. Where's that? It's in outer space. Okay. <laughs> What's it on? <laughs> the Last Starfighter. Oh, God, this shit. Okay, let me explain. <laughs> it's his list. He can oh, he my God. To. He's the benefactor. He can say whatever oh, the fuck he wants. The Last Starfighter. You know, I guess <laughs> that, that movie is not over stimulate across the world, so I enjoy my last Starfighter niche. I feel like every fifth conversation me and you have, we argue about the last Starfighter. <laughs> I feel like that's the thing. Is there uh, something to argue about with it? Yes, he likes it. I don't. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love the premise of it. Okay. With, with, yeah. ha- with having listened to you these past nine years, mm-hmm. I'm probably going to go with Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure he has a better taste. Trust me. If that movie, for the space scenes, mm-hmm. had the same crew that Lucas had, it mm. would be Star Wars. Okay. okay. Is that the one that Unicorn dies in it? No, that's, that's the last like, Unicorn. That's, oh, that's, that's, that's the last Unicorn in that movie is amazing. That's <laughs> <laughs> Did well, you like The Last Jedi? Oh, God. He likes The Last Starfighter and <laughs> no. The Last Unicorn. Oh, okay. so, well, it's I like the best I like Star Wars movie, movie, but... Can I change mine? Yes. Shake it, Blake. Shake it. Don't. No. There don't. you go. Can I change mine? Yeah. I'm going to go to Dune. It's a wow. desert. Yep. He doesn't like cold weather. Nice. He loves the spice. Uh, I just want to see what's in the box. So You know what's in the box? We don't know. It's That's why I want to go. Head. We already figured that out. Oh, Brad Pitt's head? Sure. Brad Pitt's head. Ooh, ice pirates. Blake, check your, your damn mic. I don't know what's going on with that thing. How about now? Yeah, there we go. Okay. Jeff, what, where, right. where are you going to live? I'm picking the Matrix. I am going to be plugged into the Matrix and know nothing about the real world and have them give me a rich, lucrative life. Okay. And I'll turn you all in. The other one I thought about was living on the barges in Wally. Oh. Well, you don't even have to get up. That's true. <laughs> That'd be a horrible life. I'm out. On a cruise ship? Yeah. I don't like being around people. Okay, you can live down with Wally down on That's the fine. That's fine. <laughs> Uh, where are you going, Blake? I don't know. Really? All that time? <laughs> I didn't do any preparation for this oh. question. <laughs> King's Landing. <laughs> Oak Island. <laughs> no. Oak Island. Oak Island. <laughs> yeah, Oak Island. Because <laughs> it's a fucking fantasy that they'll ever find something. <laughs> they find buttons all the time. Oh, yeah. From Levi Strauss. <laughs> buried wood. Uh, uh, you answer this, not Jason? That big. Yeah. <laughs> it was like what, ten seasons. Yeah. Like, it may like not interned the whole freaking <laughs> island. No. They're, f- hey. they're finding stuff that they themselves have turned over. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see hey, my wallet? Oh, my <laughs> library card. <laughs> yeah, there's my car keys. <laughs> Did you see this right. John Deere tractor? Now we can get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> That's all they were doing for ten years, <laughs> looking for their car keys. <laughs> <laughs> they finally brought Miriam back. Uh, Did you answer it, Jay? Yeah, I said Westworld. Oh, yeah. The good part of Westworld. Season one, Westworld. Yes. I'm 
been looking for this. <laughs> I, I want to go ahead and thank uh, Meeples and Wine for the question. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a good one. Uh, Me- Meeples and Wine is uh, a mic from uh, mm. formerly 40 going on 14. Yep. Uh, they oh. have retired their podcast, and uh, some of them, uh, uh, Mike and his wife, are doing uh, Meeples and Wine. Yep. It's uh, about uh, board games and beverages. Yep. I'm glad they brought it up because I was able to talk about the last Starfighter. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Anytime you can fit that in. Oh. <laughs> I'm actually watching that tomorrow. I'm excited. No, you're not. <laughs> not yeah. watching it, nor are you excited. No. Double line. Jessica Jones? Yeah. <laughs> I'll get to that. No, we won't. <laughs> That's nowhere on the outline. Is, will, uh, will she be at the expo? Jessica Jones. Christian Ritter? Yeah. Okay. Good call. <laughs> what about uh, John Bernthal? Uh, how about Frank Stallone? He said yes. <laughs> Only if he can sing a song. Oh, memories. From uh, <laughs> Professor Number One. From Cats! <laughs> well, the guy out of all the songs in the world to come up with, Frank Question, Stallone though. singing memories from Cats. <laughs> Which, memories. Wait. Is it from the, the butthole version or the non-butthole, non-butthole. version? <laughs> Frank Stillen's classy. He doesn't do the butthole version. Uh, what else you got there? So, the Josh Gad version. The yes. Josh Gad version. <laughs> from uh, Professor Number One at Doctor Number One is the old Viewmaster toy, the best way to watch The Last Starfighter. Oh, what? that is not what it says. <laughs> no, it says Star Trek. <laughs> it says, will Picard Season 3... <laughs> Be released on The Last Starfighter? <laughs> it's the same thing, right? I will let you know that the old Viewmaster toy was the best way to watch Pinocchio. You know how you watch Pinocchio? On the, the Viewmaster toy? Why? You get seven images and then it's over? Good no, call. Not with Tom Hanks. Not with Tom <laughs> Hanks. <laughs> and you know what you can do with that Pinocchio? You just or, take the Viewmaster yeah. screen out and throw it away. That's a better version, too. That's another good version. That fucking show. Did you have a Viewmaster? Who didn't have a Viewmaster? Okay, I was just asking. Growing up, everybody had a Viewmaster. Yeah. I don't think anybody has them today. I don't remember. I don't remember what we had on ours though. That's what I was trying to think. I still have I'm a sure Viewmaster at home. Do you, Doug? What? what What did you have on your Viewmaster uh, when you were at home? Please send it to. Uh, it yeah, was okay. probably a tour of uh, Walt Disney World or something. Oh, jeez. I think that's what I have in mind right now. <laughs> <laughs> no. Or what stupid thing did Jason want that you beat him up so he would stay away from it? <laughs> wow. Better. That's the better question, dog. I did get beaten up a lot. Oh, bull crap. Your brothers just ignored you. No, that's true. That's true. <laughs> no, no, that was when I, when I, when I met him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Jim, or what's your name? Jeff, give me some news of the geek music. It's time for another installment of the news of the geek. It's not a rankings edition. Somebody rankings edition? It. Somebody's got to fix that. See, I didn't read that because I thought that's dumb. I'm not going to read that because it's not right. Per Fandom Wire, where uh, Andrew gets all of his news from, one of the biggest complaints expected by showrunners and directors when they attempt to adapt a piece of literature into a TV series the very much devoted fan base that comes running with their pitchforks, the source material isn't closely followed. Henry Cavill is one such person from the crowd who's a devout... Devout? Nope. Devout believer in sticking to the source material. According to a report by Recap Focus, where Jim gets all of his news from... That's South Park. Cavill pretty much had a fallout with the Witcher story writers... Story writers? uh, Over diverging opinions on whether or not to follow the source material... Which Cavill was a staunch, 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 staunch advocate of sticking to the original story by Sapkowski. Hey, that was actually pretty good. Thank you, Mike Sapkowski. To make things even worse, a former show writer for the Witcher TV series, Bo DeMeo, that's a fake name, right? It's a great fake name if it yes. is. Recently, it's an even better real name if it is. They claim that the other show writers for the series were in full agreement with each, with each other over their shared dislike of the source material. So I'm going to write this show, but I fucking hate it. Yeah, I let's hate, just do something else. I hate the whole idea behind this show, but I like I'm money. Write it anyway. Yeah, Henry Cavill wanted to get out of this mess. It's no surprise, uh, since his and the fans' wishes were not met at all. An interview with Brigade. Brig- Brigade. Brigade. <laughs> Brigade. This is why we have Jason read this, because he can't read. Uh, Radio 1, where Jeff gets all his news from. No, it isn't. Director Steven Sturgic praised the way that Cavill introduced himself to the set, taking the time to shake everybody's hands. Quote, he shakes everyone's hands. He goes around the entire room. 
And this is not a small operation. This is a big ass production. So when he shakes everyone's hands, I basically sit down because I'm going to be there for a little while. Wow, he was able to read ass without a problem, and our copy has asterisks instead of S's. Trail. But he can't uh, read brigade. <laughs> he went out of his way to learn everybody's names, uh, introduce himself to everyone. That uh, sounds like a dick. Yeah, oh, God, Henry. Uh, he concluded that Cavill could be a politician, emphasizing just how much of an impact he made on every single member of the production. What? He's also That doesn't make sense, does it? Uh, Cavill also is a diehard fan of The Witcher games and novels, so much so that he has even promised the fans more book loyalty as the series enters three, season three, which did not happen because he's gone. Well, the director liked him. The writers didn't. That's true. <laughs> um, how, how do you like a writers on a TV show that hates the source material? Like, oh, we're just going to write whatever we feel like writing. We're not going to follow the actual plot of what it is and so yeah i agree with henry cavill i was like you know what he's a big fan Mm -hmm. he wanted to stick with it and the writer's like fuck you and all right well i'm i'm out i'll see you later and of course this is in contrast to earlier reports that he was problematic yes you know on the set i was like of course if you're a big fan of the source material and you got these writers you know you know squeezing out this excrement that doesn't go with the original, you know, original content. You signed on with this because that's yep. what you wanted to do. And you sit there with the writers going, guys, ladies, everybody, yeah. that's not what that happens. Oh, no, we're, we like this. We're going to do this. I'm like, all right, I'm out. I got it. Let's, let's put Garrett on a, uh, on a spaceship. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> you ever think about the Witcher in space? They did it with Jason. Give him a broom. They did it with Josie and the Pussycats. Uh. Pussycats in outer space. Uh, so there you go. So maybe Henry Cavill is not an asshole. He just is devoted he just to plays the craft. On TV. Just devoted to the craft. Uh, let's see here. E Bombs World had uh, twenty one of the most. Um, sorry, the most. Sorry, what am I looking at here? I have no In clue. In the wake of Oreo announcing their Thank latest you. catastrophe, the most Oreo Oreo, we've decided to dig up all the Oreos past collabs. Some are fine. Some are disgusting. But one thing for certain, we didn't ask for any one of them. We won't go through all 21. We can go through all 21 and say how many we've had okay. on the show. Okay, we got the Red Velvet Oreo Milkshake at Burger King. Nope. 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 Barefoot wa- barefoot Oreo wine. I nope. tried to buy that last year, and I was uh, they couldn't ship it they, to Ohio. They, yeah. Yep. So we were denied. Yep. Batman Oreos. I did yes. not have Batman Oreos. I think Oreos. we did. did. I think we did. Yeah. No. And all it was was just the Batman was, logo yeah. on, and uh-huh. it had red cream. Yep. Yep. Black and black and pink Oreos. Yep. Game of Thrones Oreos. Yep. yep. Buffalo wing and wasabi Oreos. Nope. 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 That was a Japanese flavor. Yeah. Oreo topped with do- Oreo topped with donuts from Krispy Kreme. Nope. Nope. That sounds amazing. No. I, the Oreo was donuts topped, topped with donuts topped or with Oreos. It? Yeah, I think it was yeah. donuts topped with oh. Oreos. Dunkin' Donuts mocha Oreos. Nope. nope. Not Dunkin' Donuts. Mm. McDonald's Oreo pie. I have. Oh. Really? Amazing. Mm-hmm. Sakura well, and matcha Oreos. Nope. Uh, M- Milka Oreo candy bar. Nope. No. The most Oreo Oreo cookies and cream, cream in between cookies. No. You looked for it. We're on, on the lookout. It was not out in the store. This is our favorite one next. Peeps Oreos. Ugh. We did have those. Lady Gaga Oreos. Yep. yep. NBA Dynasty Oreos. Yep. We had NBA Dynasty ones? Yep. I don't remember those. Cracker Slash cookie Oreos mm-hmm. from Ritz. Nope. That did not look good. Oh, it looked terrible. It was an Oreo on one side and a Ritz on the other. Yes. Pokemon Oreos. Yep. Supreme Oreos. I'm not sure we what did have those. Did we? Okay. Yes. okay. Spam an Oreo burger from McDonald's. Ugh. No. No? You gotta just say, Spam? Spam an Oreo? <laughs> Oreo and Spam? Spam, 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 Sorry, we are spam, out of Spam, Spam, Spam. spam, spam we're out of Oreos. Spam, so you just want Spam, 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 Spam. Yes. And, and an Oreo. <laughs> and Swedish fish Oreos. Ah, uh, as yes. disgusting as they sound Xbox. and probably Xbox tasty. Oreos. Yeah, Xbox, Xbox Oreos. The Swedish fish Oreos, I couldn't stop eating. There's just something about it. It's like these tastes don't go together, but I can't stop eating. As a collective, we've had it nine of the these. crack in there. Oh. Uh, here you go, Andrew. You ready? You ready? James Gunn, Peter Safran, officially start running the newly created DC Studios. Today they announced their lineup. Uh, basically, they're going to be cartoons, uh, video games, Movies and TVs all tied together from now on. But 
They're doing Matt Reeves' Batman 2. That's going to be an Elseworlds production, which we have talked about for years on this show. Just put Elseworlds at the front of it, and you can do these. Uh, they're doing another Joker film with Lady Gaga, which we again have said, put it in the Elseworlds. And that's what they're doing. Is she going to be playing the Joker? No. Harley Quinn. Boo. Uh, let's see so here. Elseworlds will be in the title? For the- y- yes. So what they're going to do is it's going to be bold and in front is what James Gunn said. Elseworlds. Batman 2 or whatever. So this will allow them to continue making their... Yes. Their, their offshoots. Their offshoot films. Yep. Yep. Uh, for uh, 2025, Superman Legacy. Uh, brand new Superman uh, actor is going to be in the role. James Gunn's writing it and probably directing it, too. Uh, Batman and Robin movie called The Brave and the Bold. Issue with this, Damian Wayne is Robin. I don't like Damian Wayne. It doesn't matter if you like him or not. They're making it. So, <laughs> I mean, Damian Wayne's been Robin for like 10 years now. And yeah, I know. Whether you like it or not, he's... The but the good Robin. news is... Oh, no, Jason doesn't like it. we got to scrap it. Hey, put it on Twitter. Put it on Twitter. I don't like I it. No. I don't like it. I'm not putting that on Did my James Twitter Gunn account. Did call you and ask you what... what you yeah, thought. you know what? I started a hashtag. Not my Robin. <laughs> not my Robin. Um, anyways, uh, the cool thing about that is Nightwing, Batgirl... Uh, all of them, like his uh, Gotham Knights. Red Hood, yep. Red Robin. They're all in. They're already being made. They're already alive in that, in that world. So they're all being brave and the bold? Uh, rumor did they announce that? The rumor is, no, they didn't announce it, but the rumor is that Nightwing will be in it. So we'll see. Uh, let's see here. Uh, they're making a TV series on HBO Max about Wonder, Woman, Wonder Woman's Island. They said it's a very Game of Thrones type move, uh, show. On um, Thay Mascara? Yep. Set that be- I did see. Set before Wonder Woman. Yeah. Uh, Booster Gold is getting a TV show. Oh, they're actually doing some Booster, Booster Gold. Booster Gold is. I love Booster since, Gold. Since they went ahead and canceled uh, Doom Patrol Titans and, and Doom Titans. Patrol. Yep. <laughs> uh, Lanterns. Well, the James Gunn said he had nothing to do with that. They did that on their own. Uh, Lanterns with uh, Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart. They're finally doing that. HBO Max series. Uh, they're basically, it's a very true detective, like they said. They're like the cops of the Earth uh, um, realm. And they find a ancient mystery. The going on online is Black Blackest Island. Night. Blackest Night. They're going to have Guy Gardner and uh, Kyle. They said that other game. lanterns will be in it. Are they going to get uh, uh, Woody Harrelson and uh, Matthew, McConaughey. Matthew McConaughey to be <laughs> Al Jordan and... Uh, <laughs> I don't think that's allowed. <laughs> I don't it think is that's HBO going. Max. It is HBO Max. You that's true. If, if it's very true detective like. Yes, they're just. <laughs> and Vince Vaughn's going to be in it. Colin Farrell, guest <laughs> stars. Mahershala Ali. Mahershala Ali, because they all... need to be proper race for Jon Stewart. Yes. Uh, Swamp Thing is getting his own movie. And they're, they're all showing up at Cincinnati Comic Expo. Yes, that's right. <laughs> uh, Waller is getting a TV series. And every interesting, uh, uh, she's going to be teaming up with all the supporting cast from Peacemaker, like each week or so. And is it going to be uh, HBO uh, Max? Uh, Viola Davis, yes, Waller. Yep. Wow. Well, you know, Gunn's got to get his girlfriend in there, doesn't he? Oh yeah, she's going to be back. <laughs> uh, also, they're um, yeah. So the uh, Supergirl is uh, making a movie. They're doing a movie of Supergirl. How about Batgirl? Uh, they s- <laughs> <laughs> there's already they made one made, <laughs> so they just need to release it. They said it was <sighs> James Gunn did not say this. Peter Safran, the other guy, did said it was unreleasable and it would do more harm than good to any DC property. It would be it couldn't be ma- uh, it couldn't come back from that, which is kind of an insult to all the people that worked on it. So that did not trend well today. That must have been bad. It's Brandon Fraser's Firefly. Come on. Well, now I want to see it. I know. I mean, the more they dog it, the more I want to see it. Yeah. It's all a ploy. They're going to release it in like six, eight months, and everyone's going to go see it. They're going to release it at the Cincinnati Comic Expo. <laughs> <laughs> Special screening, Friday night. September 22nd through 24th. Second floor. Yep. Uh, also, after that. In the coat room. <laughs> also, after that, the Roger, Roger Corman Fantastic Four uh, movie. Um, None of this is actually going to be aired. No, no, no. <laughs> what we'll do is we'll film it. Okay. And then we're going to act like it was. Re- this is like a secret version of it. Okay, and I like we'll, it. We'll be a one time only saying we, we got a copy of it. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll just be us. us. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Dana's Batgirl. <laughs> and we'll announce where it's going to be at the day of the show. <laughs> it's all going to be filmed the Thursday before the expo. And Jason is going to be Batman. 
Where is she? Tell me where she is. The cinema guys are going to do a screening of the, the Esquire. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we're going to make the news with that one. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe we will. I don't know. It could go either way. Well, a- after the screening, when people riot. When they riot, people, yeah. <laughs> and we get sued. Uh, the first uh, the first era of this uh, new DC. Yeah, Andrew, you are LLC, right? <laughs> 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 the first era is called Gods and Monsters. Uh, and finally, the one film, and they said there's going to be more, but they're not uh, sh- showing everything uh, the, or announcing everything. The authority from Wildstorm is getting a movie, and they're going to introduce them to the DC universe. Basically, it's... Was that Jim Lee? Uh, I don't Did know. Check it. The authority? If only remember. we had something that we could look that up with. <laughs> oh, you want me to look that up? Uh, so, yeah, so those are your films. There's also an animated series uh, that James Gunn wrote and is in, pre- is in production right now, uh, and it's about Dr. Frankenstein, or, about, sorry, Frankenstein's monster, the Bride of Frankenstein, Phosphorus, which is one of the um, weird uh, villains of Batman. Uh, Rick Flagg Sr. runs it, and it's a team of these monsters, and it's an animated film. Or, I'm sorry, animated series, seven uh, episodes. So he said they will all connect, but not... Like, some of them will connect a little bit more than others. Uh, they said Swamp Thing kind of takes place in its own realm, but it still has some connect uh, connectivity to it. So, you know, I like that they're doing different things. I mean, I'm fine with that. I like the B- Brave and the Bold with Batman and Robin. It's already established. Superman Legacy is not going to be an origin film. So... Well, the Authority itself was not Jim Lee. It yeah. was uh, b- pretty much a spinoff or continuation of Stormwatch, which was created by Jim Lee. Okay. So there you go. Um, and he did say that he, he kind of said, like, the Flashpoint movie with Ezra Miller, the criminal, um, allegedly, um, is basically like a reboot of the whole universe. So unfortunately, after that, they also had Blue Beetle and Aquaman 2 coming out. So I'm not sure how that all connects. But you're a reboot of the whole universe. Oh, God. They'll put Elseworlds in front of it. <sighs> I don't know what they're going to do with it. But, yeah. Blue Beetle I'm excited about, but I'm sure that's going to be a one-off. Sorry, Zachary, uh, Zachary Le- uh, Levy. I don't think you're coming back for Shazam either. Shazam 3. Yeah, he'll be out for Shazam 2. Do you think Black Adam comes back? <laughs> no. No, it's a joke. Uh, I didn't James find it Dunn funny. kind of stood you. up for... Uh, Zach yeah. Levi on when he, he, his tweet. He did say that he loves it. He, d- he does a great job, but he's like, he's, they've always kind of done, yeah. done their own thing. But Zach Levi tweeted some stuff about uh, uh, about Pfizer, and people are getting on about being an anti-vaxxer oh. when he posted some stuff that wasn't actually about the vax. Mm-hmm. And Gunn's like, oh, I'm, he's allowed to say whatever he can tweet whatever he wants. He's free to do that. I back him and support him in that. When people wanted them to throw him under the bus. I like Shazam. Considering James Gunn got thrown under the bus. Yeah. Every time. <laughs> Manufactured rage. Yes. Not my Robin. Hashtag. Not my Pfizer. Hashtag. Oh, there we go. There it is. Okay, let's uh, Jeff do box office news real quick. Box office news and report from January 27th through January 29th of 2023. Number one at the box office, Avatar, colon, The Way of Water, made another $15.7 million, a total of $621 million on a $400 million budget. Who Who's watching this film? Stop watching Avatar. I was uh, wondering the same thing. A lot of people, <laughs> Seven a weeks lot of people in a out of uh, in foreign countries because they're doing a lot better overseas. Everything I see on Twitter, I'm not kidding. Like everything I see on Twitter about Avatar, they're like, "This movie has made so much money, but I haven't seen one person that has seen this film or liked it." Like, who's watching this? The same people that apparently watched the first one and liked the first. I one. I guess. I, I've met There's nothing in theaters right now. No. And that's the other thing. But still, $15 million, and it's, what, sixth week or something? Yeah. It's a lot. Uh, number two, Puss in Boots, colon, The Last Wish, made another $10.6 million, a total of $141 million on a budget of $90 million. That's a great movie. I like that movie. I enjoyed it. I have not seen it. It's kind of like the Croods. It's just going to stay in theaters, Jeff, like it did during the uh, oh, yeah, pandemic. During the pandemic, the Croods was the only thing in the theaters. <laughs> Uh, number three, a man called Otto. Ooh, pounding it in another six point eight million for a total of forty six million on a budget of fifty million. Does it again? It gets its money back next week. Yep. There you go. 
Uh, Megan made six point four million, a total of eighty two point five million on a twelve million dollar budget. They greenlit the sequel for two thousand twenty five. And uh, pardon my pronunciation, but Pathan made five point nine million, a total of eight point five million in its opening weekend on an unknown budget. It's an Indian film. Uh, it's from India, and it is making tons oh, of money. An Indian film from India. You know what? I was trying to clarify. Shut up. He did Shut want up. people to think it was like a Native American film. Oh. It's a Bollywood film, and oh, uh, it's the number one grossing film, I think, in India of all time. Of all time at $8.5 million? No, well, this, this is, is in America. American domestic. You know what? Office. You know how long we've been doing this show? Nine years. We do the American box office. Oh, okay. That's why he never got above intern. Jeez. He's above intern. Damn it! He got two promotions from intern. Yeah, that's right. Keep it up. You're not going. To get, you're not going to get to meet Frank Stallone. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> I'm okay with that. It's an iComic Expo. <laughs> that gives me more time to wait for Keanu Reeves. <laughs> <laughs> and wait. And, and wait. wait. <laughs> None of these people are wait. coming. <laughs> Upcoming February third. Knock at the cabin. While vacationing, a girl and her parents are taken hostage by armed strangers who demand that the family make a choice to avert the apocalypse. Bum, bum, bum. Starring Dave Bautista. Soon to be uh, a yeah. comic expert. <laughs> 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 That's after premiering after Batgirl. Hey, you know, uh, so I watched uh, Glass Onion this week. Yes. yes. With Dave Bautista. He was in that, yes. Fantastic movie. I loved it. Like how it connected. Does anybody know what's going on? <laughs> that was my mother's review. <laughs> Halfway through the movie. <laughs> Knock at the cabin. Is That's an M. Night Shyamalan. Yes. It is. Yes. It's got to be better than old. It's got to be better than the happening. <laughs> what? I didn't hate old. I didn't hate it, but I just, I, I liked the twist at the end, but getting to that, I was kind of bored by it. Like we uh, were old mm-hmm. watching it. Also coming out this week, I know uh, Brian's been looking forward to this one. I have not. 80 for Brady. Well, we already talked about this on its, uh, what it, it was released. Uh, in, limited in, release. Limited last release. Week. So we won't talk about Two it anymore. Two months ago. <laughs> There's nothing else coming out this week, huh? Nope. Uh, what about Fathom Events? Yeah. I don't know what that is, but yeah. Uh, special one-offs. Like, oh. hey, we got the last Starfighter coming at 7.05 this Saturday. <laughs> Come see it. Uh, like they do, like um, like the Who concert at the theater. You know, they film and show it. So they're the ones that do the uh, whenever Critical Role is showing yes. in the theater. Yes. It's them. Uh, so, no, I don't have those. <laughs> <laughs> well, there there is The Amazing Maurice. Oh. Well, that is wow. an animated film. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brosh and Rocket. Mm. And Sword Art Online, the Sword Art Online, the movie programming. Okay, moving on <laughs> to top five this week. Uh, top five this week is uh, top five favorite best uses of music, specific uses uh, in film or television. What do you mean specific use? Well, I'll get to the doctor number one uh, response. Uh, let's oh. see here. So, so he changed the rules on us again. <laughs> no, it's the same thing. Uh, let's wait, wait, wait. see. Wait, I thought the, we're doing this music and television. Yeah, that's what I just said. <laughs> I was <made> paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> I was reading the paper. Is there something in that corner that no one pays it's attention? It's the corner. To? It's the corner, Jason. Okay, I was it, my, it doesn't travel. That paper. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, Let's scratch that. <laughs> we'll edit that. We'll edit that out later. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, you know what? Fuck it. Jeff, go first. <laughs> Uh, number five on my list, I am going with the song Tequila in Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Ah. The big shoe dance. Tequila. Blake, number five for you. All right, I hope it's number five. Of oh, course. Geez. Because if you hear one of these two songs, you know what genre you're immediately in. Fortunate One from CCR, Painted Black from Rolling Stones. In what movies? You're in Vietnam. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're in a Vi- in Vietnam now. four, yeah. Okay. Um, you know, I could have made it easy and said, you know, Ride of the Valkyries too, the, but uh, theme song to uh, what was that Vietnam TV show? China Beach. Mash. No, it wasn't China Beach. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was China Beach. Theme CSI song, Miami. Right? Yes. Yeah. No. Private right. Benjamin. <laughs> that, yeah. I think that was it. Yeah. yeah. You know you're you're in a you're in a F troop. That's right. No. But Paint of Black was also <laughs> used multiple times in Westworld. Oh, it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ooh. Don't don't give Here's it away. Put that on my Paint of Black in Westworld. At least it's an honorable mention for me. Uh, Andrew, what's your number five? 
Joe Esposito's You're the Best. In what movie? Around! That's right. You're the best around. I don't know music, so none of this is really helping me. Karate Kid. Oh, okay. (laughs) I can't believe you didn't know that. I don't know anything about music. (laughs) So what I just heard is Ralph Macchio's coming this year. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I I see where you're going with this. I like it. That's all this is, is subtle clues throughout the whole episode. Uh, Number five for you. Uh, Number five for me, Tiny Dancer from Almost Famous. You know that song? No. (laughs) Tiny Dancer, play it again. Tour of Duty. Tour of Duty was Tour the duty, name yeah. of the Tour show. Tour of Duty. There you go. Uh, number five. Tiny two. Dancer if you're on a bus. I am going to go uh, New Slang from the movie Garden State. Oh, Ooh. Listen to the shins. The shins they will change, change your life. life. Okay. Uh, number five for me is Just a Girl, Captain Marvel. Uh, I love that scene at the I'm end. I'm just a girl. And she's just kicking ass. I love that scene. Because her power is like she finally is unleashed. Because she has girl power. That's right. Oh, man, i got to put that on my list. <laughs> um, the entire soundtrack to Spice World. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have Don't Fear the Reaper from the uh, miniseries The Stand when they're all dying. Mm-hmm. I love that scene. And it's just you see all the they're playing and everyone's dying. Uh, go ahead, Jeff. Or Jim. Times they are a changing. The opening scene to The Watchmen. Bob Dylan, uh, times they are changing. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. If I would have thought of it, it would have been on my list. Does Bob Dylan let his music be in a lot of movies? Yes. Does he? Okay. Or All at least the watch t- versions if, of? If you look at uh, list on this, mm. there are about eight Bob Dylan songs. Gotcha. Okay. And, uh, if you can, on uh, Million Little Things, they used uh, Shelter from the Storm. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think uh, Parenthood, uh, at least the original theme song to Parenthood was uh, Bob Dylan. I can't remember what it was now. I was just curious. But uh, I think they changed it when they put it out in reruns or whatnot. Uh, Brian? Uh, Number four, I Hobie this one. Mm -hmm. I went to the 80s. So I've got In Your Eyes, Peter Gabriel from Say Anything, and Don't You Forget About Me, Simple Minds, Breakfast Club. Oh, okay. Good choice. Uh, Andrew, number four. The Banana Boat song. <laughs> ah, Deo. 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 From what movie? Beetlejuice. Oh, okay. <laughs> Don't Catherine make her know three times. Catherine O'Hara's coming. Ah! <laughs> I love I thought it was Winona Ryder. Should it's not Winona Ryder? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I'm, Ooh. I'm thinking Schitt's Creek. Oh, at the expo this year. Yeah. Oh, let's see if their uh, Eugene Levy Eugene thing Levy. pops right. up. <laughs> Well, we already said that Gina Davis is not coming. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but Alec horrible. Baldwin might. He would kill to get there. Uh, number Allegedly. four. <laughs> number four, Ooh. babe. I got you, babe. Oh, Groundhog Day. Day. Yes. The, b- a- <laughs> the best wake up yeah. song ever. That's an honorable to mention. To annoy for me. somebody for the rest of their lives. Yep. Uh, number four. That's a good one. Uh, number four for me, it's kind of kind of a hobby because it's pretty much, well, I've got one specific, but I'm going to pretty much throw out Quentin Tarantino's use of uh, of song in his movies. My specific one here, though, is uh, Stuck in the Middle in Reservoir Dogs. Okay. That is on my honorable mentions list. <laughs> Did somebody lose an ear on that uh, scene? It was yeah, a Van yes. Gogh favorite. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number three. Uh, number three for me is... Uh, the Gary Jewell version of Mad World is used in Donnie Darko. Hmm. Uh, Blake, number three. Uh, number three, I super hobie this, but it's all one TV show. Mm-hmm. Actually, series, epi- you know, series, two, you know, years, two, seasons two through nine. Glee? American Idol. <laughs> Drew Carey show. <laughs> no. Okay. You know, one of the great the things they... World. Yeah, one of the great things they used to do is they would take a song and they would do a... Uh, you know, sketch or a dance or a montage to it every episode, which you know supposedly is one of the reasons why you can never find it in syndication because they don't have the rights to all those music songs. But you can only find season one of the Drew Carey Show. Other than the fact that they had some great opening uh, theme songs too, good. yeah, yeah. Until they did Cleveland Rocks, and they would do. Suck. 
sucks. And they would do different. Actually, that song's awesome. But anyways. Terrible song. I don't care if you're Cleveland sucks? I don't care what your opinion of the city of Cleveland is. That song is terrible. Hey, I'll I'll tell you what. Nothing's better when you're at at Progressive Field, or, you know, formerly known as, and you you sit there and you're at the bottom of the ninth, and the Reds, or the Reds, the Indians, (laughs) now Guardians, sorry, you know, actually hit the go-ahead win, and the rock song starts breaking out. Cleveland rocks, and everybody starts yelling and screaming and starts singing Cleveland rocks when they win a game like that. You don't don't have anything like that in Cincinnati with the Reds. You got, hey, we're going down. Yo, do, hi, first, yo. Off, first off, that, that's not the song at all. I know, because you don't have one in why, Cincinnati. Why but are you yelling at us? Song than a bad song. Cleveland Rocks is an awesome rock it's a song. terrible rock song. And, and, and they, that's, they've got song. a song. Cincinnati Reds don't. Uh, time out. And I, I think it's funny. It's not that a Guardians owned song. They just play a song. Time out. I, mean, I think it's and it rocks. And I'd you when you win, I'd everybody jumps up and starts screaming and yelling, on. screaming to it. Randy Newman burn on would be better. Yes. Well then, I think it. Blake, <laughs> I think right, it's, right, right. The fucking ownership of the Reds get a rocking song when the Reds win a game where everybody can jump up and start singing it. Yeah, I think it's like cute that you should use burn on. By Randy Newman. No, no. no. <laughs> I thought you were talking about the Reds. No, I thought, no because you got to do Cleveland Rocks because it's awesome. I've taking, been there. I've done it several times. You're taking a big leap Rocks. thinking the Reds are going to win this year. Major League, you use it as to start yes. the movie. Yes. <laughs> Andrew, what's your number three? <laughs> so who from uh, the Cleveland Guardians are there this year? <laughs> <laughs> Drew Carey show. Drew Carey. <laughs> Albert Bell. Uh, he got uh, pennies from heaven. From what song or movie? Elf. Oh, okay. Oh. That's a good one. I like I'd Elf. I listen to Cleveland Rock. I like Elf. And watch Elf. <laughs> oh, stop it. I love Elf. <laughs> love it. So who from we the movie Elf, Elf is showing up? Yeah. Will Ferrell? <laughs> I hope not. Maybe, oh, Zoe, oh, Deschanel? Zoe Deschanel. Bob Newhart. Ooh. Oh, wait. If you get Zoe Deschanel, though, she's very strict on her diet. She is uh, vegan yeah. and uh, no gluten. And I don't know if there's anything left in the world to eat, M&Ms. but that's what she eats. M&M's. Uh, Brian, number three. No skyline. <laughs> uh, number three for me, shipping up to Boston. Uh, Dropkick Murphy is from The Departed. Okay. Uh, Good, pick. Th- Good pick. Solid yeah. pick. Number three, Jim. Other than Cleveland Rocks. Number three for me, I will have to go with... Um, These Days by Nico from the Royal Tannenbaums. Okay. Uh, number three for me is um, Hearts on Fire, Rocky for a Montage. Hearts on Fire. Because he's got his fire back because Adrian's there. He's ready. That's not even the best song from that t- No. That movie. What's the other one? The, uh, the Burning Heart. Sing it. The Survivor song. It's the Burning Heart. Just about to break. Anyways, uh, number two for us. <laughs> Jason never heard of that one before. It's in Rocky IV. I can't help it if he hasn't heard it. I'm too worried about the plot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> too worried about the plot. <laughs> Frank Stallone singing. <laughs> burning hard. Burning hard. Uh, my number two is from the Office se- uh, series finale, Creed's All the Faces. Like at the end when they're all talking, I just love that scene. And he's just, you know... He tells, you know, it's just weird. Like, you just, work, you know, show up for a job, and you, they become family. And then he looks at the police officers, let's do this. Because <laughs> <laughs> he was arrested. That uh, was a good ending. I love that uh, series finale. Well, uh, um, am I number two? Yep. I'll go see a series finale, too. Oh, yeah? They should have ended the season with this episode, but they went on to have more. <laughs> I will go with Scrubs, The Book of Love, by Peter, Gab- on K- Peter Gabriel's version. <sighs> I was going to say, the opening theme song Scrubs, you know, on the Superman is pretty good. Oh, it's a great one. But yeah. I'm going with the, when they go back and look at the, his life and all the, yep. yeah. Yeah, all the people in the hallway. and <laughs> Yes. Uh, we, we officially say season nine of Scrubs is just a spinoff. Scrubs ended with season eight. Season nine is a different show. Gotcha. Uh, number two, Brian. Uh, number two for me would be Lose Yourself from 8 Mile. Oh, nice one. You do that whole... <laughs> Mom Spaghetti. Yep. No, that's, uh, it's no Mackay Pfeiffer. Uh, oh, he's at Mackay Pfeiffer! <laughs> and he's the guy in the movie! I get it! Uh, Andrew, what's your number two? All right, I'm going to go with two here. Okay. Sorry. He's hoping it. Yeah. So this one, 
Um, it's from a movie I love. It's Top Gun, Take mm. My Breath Away. Yep. All right. Every time you hear that, I think of Top Gun. He says Top Gun, too. I'm leaving. What's and the next they, one? You live here. The Damn heat, it. <laughs> the heat is on because it brings oh. back a lot of memories from when I would go to Kings Island as a kid. Mm-hmm. And they would always have that playing at some point when I was there uh, in the background. And I love the movie. Okay. So, which is Beverly Hills Cop. Yep. I like that. So, Tom Cruise and Eddie Murphy, Cincinnati Comic Expo. Yeah. <laughs> so Tom Cruise. <laughs> uh, number two for you. Where is my mind? Yeah, the Pixie song, Where is my mind? Continually throughout the leftovers. And, of course, uh, in Fight, Fight Club. Club. Mm-hmm. Okay. So... Song, you know it's a good fight club. That's right. You know it's a good song when it's in several genres, Uh, TV and movies. You met me at a very strange time (laughs) in my life. (laughs) Number two for you, Jeff. Uh, Number two for me, I'm going to go with. uh, I'm going Glee. Okay. Uh, Every single (laughs) every single song Glee ever did. No, (laughs) specifically, I'm going to do it. Was it the uh, Young the Giant song Cough Syrup? Mm-hmm. It's a song that uh, the character Blaine uh, sings, and it's interspaced with the uh, David Karofsky attempted suicide. Okay. It's a very powerful uh, way to start a show. Okay. Uh, number one, can you do an uplifting song? Uh, number one for me, I'm doing uh, The Blower's Daughter in the movie Closer. Mm-hmm. When, you know, the slow motion of Natalie Portman walking to mm-hmm. you, and you just can't take my eyes off of you. What does it taste like? <laughs> it tastes like you, but sweeter. There you go. <laughs> Best line ever. Uh, number one, Blake. Number one, hope it again. Long run TV show. I loved in Westworld, especially season one. The uh, yes. play, no, the player piano. Yep. Play music piano. sheet, where you can get you know it's like you listen to the songs like oh I know that song. Of course, a couple of them were you know Radiohead and. Mm-hmm. And some other good songs. And Painted Black was one of them. And Painted Black was one of them, as we mentioned earlier. I was almost scared someone was going to say, Westworld. (laughs) It's like, damn it. But yeah, I I loved that uh, trope that they had in there with the player piano in the uh, saloon. Number one, Andrew? Two again. Sorry. Hobie did. Um, One is uh, opening my favorite movie, Back to the Future, Power of Love. Ah, don't need a credit card. And the other one is, because it's my favorite rock group, <laughs> and um, it got my kids to like the music, and that would be Thor Ragnarok, Led Zeppelin. Ah, uh, when he lands song. on the bridge, yeah, that is good. yeah. For a second there, I thought you were saying Huey Lewis was your favorite rock group, and you made me think we had a Patrick Bateman in the midst here. <laughs> <laughs> so Huey Lewis uh-huh. at the Comic Expo, <laughs> got it. <laughs> if you liked Ragnarok, wait for the new D and D movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number one yeah, for you, no Brian. Yes, that Patrick Bateman movie yet. <laughs> Nope. America, go ahead. Uh, number one for me. Patrick Graven. American Psycho. <laughs> <laughs> uh, damn, it feels good to be a gangster. Ghetto boys. Ah! In space. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the office. Yep. Yeah. Space. Yeah. I never yeah. saw that yeah. yet yeah. on the TV office show. Office space, different than the office. <laughs> no, it isn't. Are. Just let people think it's not. I've never heard that theme song in that episode. <laughs> uh, number one, Jim? Uh, it'd be a good, if I would put it on my list, it's got a model mention, but I could have said kind of with that one would be uh, It's Hard Out Here for a Pimp yeah. by Hustle, Hustle and Flow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but instead, I am going to go with Don't Stop Me Now from Shaun of the Dead. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Don't stop, stop me now. Someone they're just beating up, having the, a good beating up time. the zombies. A good uh, my number one was from a film that not many people saw, and I've talked about it many times on here. Star Wars, we all saw Star Wars. No, no the we didn't. Last Starfighter. <laughs> the last Starfighter, when that unicorn dies. Oh, my God, I'm in tears. saw M.A.S.H., Jason. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> oh, Suicide is Painless from M.A.S.H., what? Nope. Magic Carpet Ride. Yeah, that's some honorable mention, Suicide is Painless. Oh. Oh. Magic Carpet Ride from the movie Go. They had, like, three different movies back in the late 90s when there were three different stories that they all interconnect at the one point. So that was their big thing, or one of the popular tropes back then. You are well, correct. Yes. No one's heard of it. Great movie. Great Steppenwolf. Movie. Uh, yeah, there was a trope of using Steppenwolf uh, songs in movies. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, Wayne's so World. Did they use Steppenwolf? <laughs> probably. Probably Magic Carpet Ride. I uh, think they did in the second one. Let's see. My uh, honorable mentions. Mm-hmm. Let's see. We'll go to 
The I kind of want to look up and find all the, the entire movies Jurassic Park that soundtrack. The ride was in. Which one? Jurassic Park. Okay. Uh, the song "That's Not How the Story Goes" from the series, a series of unfortunate events. Okay. And the reigns of Castamere from ah. Game of Thrones. Could you just hear those first few notes, and you're like, "Oh no." <laughs> yeah. Okay. Any uh, other honorable mentions? Honorable mentions. I have the BC Boys sabotage in uh, Star Trek Beyond. When they use the Beastie Boys music to save the universe. Okay. <laughs> and I also have uh, Breaking Bad in its last season. It used uh, the song El Paso, I think, to start the season. And Baby Blue to end the season. Okay. And Simon and Garfunkel's Sounds of Silence for Graduate. Yep. The entire soundtrack to The Crow. Oh, that's a good one. I didn't think of that. The soundtrack to uh, The Graduate. All four songs. We've done soundtracks True, Graduate. Before. It's true. Yeah. Well, sorry, and train spotting. We've had some uh, listener feedback. Oh, sorry, Brian. Did you have any? I do. I have some. Go ahead, real quick. Andrew has some. Yeah. Oh, good. Uh, Sm- uh, All Star by Smash Mouth. Get out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Rat Race. God, I love them. No. Oh. Shrek. 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 Uh, yeah. And the other one's uh, Queen in Wayne's World, because you just mentioned Wayne's yeah, World. Bohemian Rhapsody. That. Oh, Bohemian Rhapsody. I have Queen in uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, the movie. Oh, okay, yeah. But no, Wayne's Get Out. <laughs> Sorry. Number, uh, for you. It, was, it was a great use oh, in Wayne's World. It was not in Get Out. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. I did have Bohemian Rhapsody. Let's see. Uh, Ooh Child, The Five Stair Steps from Boys in the Hood. Um, what else did I have? Uh, Broken from Amy Lee and Seether from The Punisher. Oh. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, I forgot about oh, the song that uh, he sings in the diner, The Punisher. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, may, I wrote that song for you. <laughs> Anything else? Nope. Okay. Are you sure? Let me get back to you. Everything okay. from a mighty wind. Uh, do- ooh, doctor number <laughs> one. This is spinal tap. Doctor number one had music when it's behind a montage as a score, as a theme song for fighting. And in Remy LaCroix sex scenes. Ah. Remy LaCroix. It's uh, moving. Uh, Steve, about everything I learned from movies. Everything I learned from movies. Wild Horses by the Sundays in the movie Fear, the roller coaster scene. Who, wild Horses by who? Uh, the Sundays. The Sundays, yeah. Is it a version Not Rolling of Stones? The nope. Stone? Is it the same song, just a different version? I have no idea. Version or? It's from 1996. I haven't yeah, seen that movie since yeah. 1996. Uh, Hocus Pocus by Focus in RoboCop 2017. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, the music video for that song is incredible. Uh, X Gone, Give It To Ya in Deadpool. From uh, Xavier Games. Uh, opening theme to Life Force 1985 by Henry Mancini. Mancini? Mancini. Whatever. Cat People by David Bowie and Inglorious Bastards. That's a good one. That is a good one. Randy, Randall Holt, did some research on this one, which is amazing for the show. Um, <laughs> As a listener for nine years, I would hope so. Yes. Everything in Spinal Tap is honorable mention. Okay. Number five, Dream Warriors by Dawkins in A Nightmare in Elm Street 3. <laughs> oh. oh, that was terrible. Fortunate Son by CCR, Forrest Gump. Yep. The End by The Doors in Apocalypse Now. Yep. yep. Frenzy. Uh, by Screaming Jay Hawkins in the X Files, and Banana Splits theme song from Kick Ass. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. uh-huh. uh, Dana Gardens. Hey, we know people that work there. And we I know, know people the who, who own there account, too. Yeah. We, we know people that own that place. Uh, Tumbling Tumbleweeds in the Big Lebowski. Okay. Any way you want it in Caddyshack. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so let's, let's dance. dance. <laughs> Stuck in the middle with you, Reservoir Dogs. Good pick. Christmas and Hollis, Die Hard. Ah. And my heart, what? My heart will go on in Titanic. Yeah. Uh, you can't, you can't even think of that song without yeah. thinking that. Randall Holt said that was the most excellent <laughs> top five pick. What, um, what, what about uh, Apocalypse Now with a Ride of the Valkyries? And That's what yeah. he said, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And finally, I, Sean Coon at Pittsburgh Nerd had Sabotage in Star Trek Beyond. Oh, I didn't mean to steal it from you, Sean. Running Up That Hill, Stranger Things. Oh, yeah. That's what I forgot. I was going to put Stranger Things on my list. It was on every single list that I yeah, saw. Yeah, so but I that's the one. I, I didn't look up lists. I just tried to go through my own memory. But, yeah, Running Up That Hill and uh, uh, Sean has it on there later. Metallica, I apologize. Metallica's, Metallica's Puppets. Master Puppets. Uh, Fruit Roll-Ups theme song, Tougher Than Leather, uh, <laughs> Jay and Silent Bob. Hallelujah in West Wing. That's a good one. 
And what, all along. What was the name of that, that, that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> What's the name of the song again? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Oh, it's right here. Go fuck yourself, Jim. I have a speech impediment. You have a brain impediment. Same thing. Uh, all along the Watchtower by ba- uh, I'm getting Battlestar. I'm tired of writing down you have a brain impediment for the show <laughs> titles, guys. Battlestar Galactica. Uh, bad idea of the week. Having AV, AV Mary as your... Uh, th- Not having enough song. Hubba Bubba for Andrew. Not having enough Hubba Bubba for, your, for Andrew. That would be uh, bad idea number 189. 189. Okay. You know, can we guys just say something? Yes. You know who has the best soundtracks in all his movies is Adam Sandler. I love the music that he picks and throughout all his movies. Happy Gilmore is on today. They had an Adam Sandler mini marathon on this morning. Had it on in the background. I'm actually seeing Adam Sandler next week in concert. Is that on Monday? Yeah. Yeah, I thought about going. Yeah, going with my brother. I'll see your Adam Sandler, and I'm going to still raise your Quentin Tarantino. He's Uh, Speaking of... I'll go Wes Anderson. Ooh, Ooh, good one. I'll what do you say? John Hughes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, John Hughes got oh, some great yeah. music in his movies as uh, well. Speaking of comedians, uh, who else is going to see Kevin James with me? Okay, uh, so. I think we're having an entire office uh, event. Yeah. We're all going. Yeah. Give me a ticket. I'll really go with you. What? Is Kevin James coming? Yeah. June when? 17th. When did that get announced? Yesterday. Oh man, my wife loves Kevin James. <laughs> then your wife would love my D and D character. You just broke our mics, Jason. <laughs> it was funny. She actually asked about because I told her she's going to miss Adam Sandler, and that's why I wasn't going because she wasn't going. And oh, I'd be going by myself. So I was like, uh, you can go with but, Jason. But then she was like, yeah, one's um. She was asking about Kevin James, and she was asking about uh, Carrot Top, um, Seinfeld, <laughs> and she goes, "Oh, I guess they're not coming." So I guess the day she looked, they announced it that they day. Announced it yesterday. The ones that go on sale, I believe Friday. I'm sure, there'll be plenty of tickets left. Oh, it's at Taft, I believe. Oh, that tiny place. I'm pretty sure. I was shocked. Down. Sandler was at the arena, Heritage Bank Arena. Uh, Ten thousand people. Yeah, how, how many tickets? Because I was looking the other Where day, it was only like half sold out. Taft. I thought it would be a Taft. It was ex- the th- those tickets were not cheap. Um, I thought he'd be playing at uh, Paul Brown or whatever they call that now. <laughs> now he's getting a lower bowl. It's like a hundred uh, bucks. History of bad ideas field oh. at Paycor Stadium. Yes, you would think I would know the name of the field considering we named it. So we got to our titles of the show. We We've got. got a lot. <laughs> Go ahead. I don't have a lot, so I'll start off. You I just start. got three. I've got. He's aggressively chewing his hubba bubba. <laughs> I got nanny face off. We had nanny face off. And I got, no one told you to do that. I got my cousin from Cincinnati. Put my JoJo's down. Uh, My cousin from Cincinnati is also going to be on NBC next fall. Uh, It's going to be (laughs) at uh, 8 p.m. It's going to kick off the Thursday night. Ooh, must be TV. Yeah. My cousin from Cincinnati. Is that that a uh, spinoff of John from Cincinnati? Uh, It is. Let's hope not, because that (laughs) failed miserably. It's a reboot. Ah, uh, yeah. Is my cousin John? <laughs> yes. Oh. It's not a reboot. It's just his cousin John. <laughs> uh, good news is it leads right into a less than Tom. A less than Tom. Less than Tom. Less yeah. Than Tom. At 8.30 on Thursdays. Um, that's all I had. We had hashtag not my Robin. We had <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. That's like the third time we've used that. <laughs> uh, you're, a re- you're a reboot? No. <laughs> uh, take, uh, what was that? Uh, take that outline back. Suck at cinema, guys. <laughs> you watch Nanny Face Off. <laughs> um, let's see. Hobie colon Pussycats in Space. <laughs> <laughs> Pussycats in Outer Space. Uh, Frank Stallone doesn't do buttholes. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Cannot do that. Uh, ne- I don't know. You think Frank Stallone would deny that? I can't do that. Nope. Can't uh, put that down there. The no co- names. The cousin from Cincinnati. Ah. <laughs> Never try. <laughs> Uh, Never try. You don't win a shart. <laughs> uh, milk the octopus eye. <laughs> oh, I don't even remember that. That was uh, the very beginning. The, pr- the printer ink. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Charlie Chaplin and the factory. Yes. <laughs> Done. <laughs> yeah, he got the um, winner. <laughs> go fuck yourself, Blake. <laughs> Anus tart. Anus tart. <laughs> I think that's the same time we've done that one, too. <laughs> okay, so Charlie Chaplin in the factory. Uh, Andrew, thanks for being on I the show. I thought you couldn't use people's hey, uh, names. I, I He's tw- dead. It's I, okay. I want to bring something up here, because we were talking about John Hughes a minute ago. Yeah. Yes. So I just making sure, like, is he making any movies? Whatever. So I just he, went to his... He's dead. 
No, he's alive. Thank God. Um, no, he's not. John Hughes. John Hughes is dead. <laughs> he died. <laughs> like fifteen years ago. That's why he's not returning your call. <laughs> ah, never mind. Okay, All right. so that's why he hasn't met the. I was like, God, I, I was like, but God, this guy seems like he's still young. He's only fifty-nine years old. This asshole won't return my call. <laughs> I've been calling this guy for five years. Fuck this guy. Man, I missed out on that. I love his movies, but anyway. Um, <laughs> Could have had Emilio. We could have had so, Bolly Ringwald. There was a unproduced screenplays that he did, and yeah. I and I like this one here. And I wish he would have made it. It's called "The History of Ohio from the Beginning of Time to the End of the Universe," which I think is kind of appropriate with the name of your, you know, yeah, history of bad is. ideas. Can and we it, get him it was on the supposed phone? Supposed to be, but they, I guess they end up the title was going to end up being National Lampoon's Dacron, Ohio. Was ah. it? So it was going to well, be National Lampoon's. Well, let's get the script and make it ourselves. Can you get in touch with him and see if you can get the script? Let's get a mediator in here for an episode. I think so. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's get somebody in here that can do readings, and let's all ask all these types of things. Like, can we connect with John Hughes in this room? In a crystal ball. Now let's, let's get, let's get, let's get, let's get let's one get of the, a Ouija what, what board. They call them? What do they call those people? Um, Psychics? Mediums? Let's get a medium in here Rods? to connect with John Hughes. Rods. Let's make a big promo out of it. <laughs> Gab artists? <laughs> I mean, we can go on. <laughs> Do it at the expo. Oh. In one of the small rooms. Yes. Yeah. And when I'm giving a tour to Jim Lee, I'll show him that room <laughs> up on the second floor. When you give the tour to Jim Lee, yeah. just make, make him come through the, the, uh, um, the medium room. Bre- breaking news. <laughs> the seance room. Yeah. <laughs> breaking news from Screen Rant. Yeah. Brad Boys 4 has officially been announced. Bad Brad Boys? Boys? Brad Boys. Brad Boys. <laughs> We're going to screen it at the expo with Brad Pitt. <laughs> Brad boys, Brad, Brad boys. Pitt and Brad Argus. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, thanks, Andrew, for showing up. No, Bad Boys 4 it. was just officially confirmed. <laughs> the last time you were on was 200 episodes ago. Let's not do that. Was it? Yeah, 400. <laughs> <laughs> it was close. It was like 150. Uh, I like that you always try to come on. Because I always say you have an open chair there. Uh, I got to get an invite. Every week. You got an invite. You have an open invitation. I, tell you, let's, I, I really want the medium. I, I want the medium. I think this will be fun. But you run the expo, so I think you can make that. Oh, you mean here in the uh, Bob's studio? In your studio. house, yes. In your studio right here. We'll do it live. Okay. Can, do you know a medium? We can find one. I'm sure they're all over. <laughs> I know a double extra large. I'll, I'll, find, I'll find one on Twitter. I bet Scab us. Jeff knows one personally. Oh. <laughs> How about we, we just, just get Scab Jeff to do it? If only he listened to the podcast. Oh, and, if only. Roger says goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> Bye. From Walking Dead to Talking Heads, from comic books to TV sets, there's a history. Not so bad, but there's a history. It's the history of bad, so bad. The history of bad, it's bad. The history of bad ideas. Podcast. Oh, yes. You are listening to a hobie.